evening and welcome to Lake County High School Football on AM 1460 WBKC. We are at Jack Bribb Memorial Stadium for the Battle of Painesville as the Harvey Red Raiders host the Riverside Beavers for NEC Supremacy and to call tonight's action the voice of Lake County Sports, Bill Starkey. Thank you very much, Frank, and welcome everyone to what should be a grand football game here at Jack Bribb Memorial Field as we approach the 37th meeting between these two schools since the system was first broken up in 1950 and uh, if you count this count the first few years it's been a very even series through this years but uh, I think this year we've got about as even a match as we ever had Frank. You're right Bill uh, it's, it's even a match of, as I have seen in, in high school football in a long time and of course you've been doing it a lot longer but uh, earlier this week we were trying to go through uh, uh, the season so far for both teams and look at their opponents and, and score differentials and we didn't find much difference at all. No we certainly didn't. Let's look at some of those games. Uh, the teams that they beat uh, each has played and beaten so far. Riverside beat Connie at 27 to 20. Harvey beat them 28 to 19. Riverside took Jefferson 61 to 7. Harvey beat them 46 to 7. Riverside topped Harbor 27 to 7. Harvey beat Harbor 36 to 6. And Riverside shut out St. John's 27 to nothing. Harvey shut out St. John's 41 to nothing. Uh, the other team scores against them are just about match what uh, the each team did against them. And then the, the two games that separate them, uh, Harvey uh, victor over Ashtabula in the, the big ball game here that we broadcast on homecoming night by a score of 35 to 31. And of course, uh, Riverside played Ashtabula up on their field and got beat 55 to 37, one of the highest scoring games uh, of the season. And then the other uh, matches where they separated uh, the Riverside defeated Madison last week in that rain out at uh, Riverside 60 nothing. Harvey went down to Madison after that Asheville game and lost 30 to 12. So uh, those two games, I think. Uh you could really throw out because they were played on different fields and under different conditions, and uh, it still shows the uh, offensive power of these two clubs. The offensive power is correct, but we've got two very good running backs we're going to watch you out here. For Harvey, Greg Noble. For Riverside, John Schaefer. Both quarterbacks are, are the two top quarterbacks in this county. I don't think there's any doubt about that. For Harvey, Sean Seibert, and for Riverside, Matt Rupert. You've got a couple of very good receivers and spikes for uh, yeah, spikes and dowdies for, uh, for for Harvey and of course Bedink and Spalding for Riverside. Right and they've been thrown to a lot during this season. Both of these quarterbacks have gone well over a thousand yards passing and Matt Rupert leads all quarterbacks in the area in total yards gained with uh, Seibert not too far behind him. And I think the only reason Seibert is uh, a little bit behind him is because he sat out the one Ashtabula St. John game when uh, Jim Colo started uh, at quarterback and uh, Rivers or uh, Harvey won handily that day. Right. Uh, in fact Colo picked up 111 yards passing that game himself. Well, it's been a, a great series over the years, but this is the first time since the uh, late 1960s that the game has really had any meaning in a conference matchup. And I think it was and, uh, 1968 that it was, so right. 20 years ago. About 20 years ago. So this time the game really means something, not just the bragging rights of Painesville, but perhaps the Northeastern Conference Championship. Absolutely, and Bill, we will also be checking in with Jim Long, who is out at the Ashtabula field. Now, if Ashtabula happens to lose that game to County at and County Out might be the only team on their schedule left that can beat them. The winner of this game will be in sole possession, but neither team will still be out of it with one week left to go. Right, and each of them has a pretty tough game next week. Already taking on Geneva down here, and Riverside at home against Asheville Edgewood. So the season is far from over, but this right now is a big game, the one all of Painesville has been waiting for, and we're going to have a standing room crowd on hand to watch it. We'll come back and take a quick look at the starting lineups right after we take a break for these messages. Sometimes big companies forget how they became big companies. Not Chicago Title. They never allowed their solid, steady, and consistent commitment to fundamentals become eroded. They understand that attention to detail is crucial to any transaction, be it a local residential conveyance or a national multi-state assignment. That's why they're staffed with skilled, dedicated, and experienced professionals, whose number one priority is swift, accurate service. Their belief in essentials even extends to their policy of local grassroots autonomy. All of their regional locations, coast to coast, have the authority to carry out decisions without the need of national office approval. This means their customers enjoy the kind of flexibility and ingenuity that avoids undue and costly delays. 
Throughout Chicago Title's 140-year history of financial strength, their adherence to the practice of fundamentals has held firm and for a good reason. At Chicago Title, fundamentals are the basic building blocks of their success. Both teams coming out of the field at the same time, Bill, and boy, does that have the place rocket. Well, we got blows flying, or banners have been waving, and uh, they're ready to go here. These two teams are fired up for this ball game, and uh, they've been pointing for this all season long. Both teams knew coming in that uh, they were going to be in the race for this Northeastern Conference Championship, and they certainly have been all year long. Uh, the, the two teams last year, uh, they, about a seven point difference I believe one touchdown and the year before that it was a one touchdown difference each team the other won. way right so they have been evenly matched over the past uh, three years and as we said this is probably the best one of all let's quickly look at the offensive lineups for the two clubs and of course for uh, Riverside we mentioned the quarterback Matt Rupert a senior at 6 185 pounders one of the top throwers in the business he'll have it at running back Andre Roach a junior at 205 pounds and John Schaefer a senior at 175 75. The flanker, Dan Brannon, he's a senior at 180. At the ends, Judd Spaulding, a senior, 200-pounder. At the other side, Mike Bedink, who is a senior, 160-pounder. The tackles, Matt Collister, a senior, 285. And Buzz Brandis, a senior at 195. And the guards, Trevor Howard and Brian Peterson. And the center, Dave Williams. I'll run through it quickly because they're getting ready to go. And, of course, for Harvey, Sean Seibert, the quarterback, Greg Noble, and Chris Austin will be the running backs. Rusty Phillips at the flanker. The ends, Mike Dowdy and... Uh, Colin Quigley at the tackles, Gary Holbrook, Steve Isabella. The guards are Ron Gardner and John Farina, and the center is Mike Colgrove. And, of course, there's a lot of other players who will be alternating in at those positions as well. So we're all set to go. Harvey will receive the football. They won the toss. And uh, it'll be the Riverside Beavers kicking off. Riverside will be defending the south goal. Harvey the north goal. Brennan set to do the kicking off. The ball teed up at the 40-yard line. Breeze was blowing across the field for the most part, but right now seems to have settled down. And gusty, very gusty today. And Brennan's kick is going to be a bouncer. Hopped up in the air, was grabbed by Vargas at the 30-yard line, and the officials are signaling a stop on the play. We're going to flag down on the far side, Bill, but... Gonna have a penalty already. Harvey lined up offside. <laughs> a little over anxious to try to get to that football. Well, yeah, that hurts uh, what could be a good return for Harvey as Vargas took that ball to 30 and he was ready to run up the middle for what could have been some good yardage on the return. But that's nullified by the penalty. Riverside will be kicking off from the 45-yard line. I don't know if he just missed that or if he meant to do that to try to keep it out of the hands of Greg Noble and the deep man for Harvey. Noble is flanked by Eddie Gant, and I'm trying to check the other number. But it is also yes. right. So Brandon will try once again. I don't know if he intentionally kicked that one into the ground last yeah. time or if uh, he just... Uh, Misconnections a bit. And this time he gets a line drive. It goes through Vargas, through Noble's hand, rolls back to the five-yard line, and Noble falls on it at the four. Well, right now, Riverside has definitely got the advantage. This defense is a very good defense, and you've got a very good offense deep in their own territory right from the opening kickoff. Already the first the first shift of a motion, and, uh, yes, motion goes over to Riverside. Ellie. Uh mistake on the part of the Harvey Red Raiders lining up offside on the original kickoff and now they're faced with a first and ten from their own four yard line. Sean Seibert brings his team out of the huddle. Likers split out wide on each side and he has the ball off. Here's Austin running up the middle. Found a little bit of room. Got up to the seven yard line. It's pulled down there. I think, Bill, we're going to see a little bit more of Chris Alston tonight than we do we, than we have of Greg Noble early in the season. Greg Noble, his, his uh, production in numbers has, has slowly been slowing down over the last few games. Mark Poffrey was a man who came up and made the stop in the play. So gain of three yards, second and seven. Robert running 
from the tee. Drop back, fires a pass out. He has Aaron Green and has the first down across the 15 out to the 19-yard line. Well, that's one of the things that Harvey does very well, the little timing patterns, especially with Aaron Green coming from his tight end position over there. He gets open very quickly, and uh, Seibert is a very accurate passer, and he knows how to get to them. So Harvey digs itself out of the deep hole, and now has a first and 10 about their 19-yard line. Seibert fakes a handoff to Austin, gives it to Noble, trying the right side, gets across the 20 and out to the 21. Little counter play by Harvey at that point, and, and Noble trying to get in there. He's so, he's so small, he's very, very hard to see coming through there. It's a gain of about three yards. Second down coming up. Still in that tee, Seibert rolls back, drops out the pass, fires on the field, he hits Dowdy. He has it at the 35 and is down at the 38-yard line. Harfrey once again coming up to make the stop for the Beavers, but uh, John Seibert connecting on his first two passes, both of them good for first downs. I did see the member of the Riverside defense that was covering Dowdy coming in with a little out pattern, and Dowdy broke loose just at the moment that Seibert threw the ball, and the re and the defender slipped on the turf down there. Although, Bill, this, this grass and, and this field is in very good condition after the snow and rain we've had lately. The Harvey with the first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. Seibert rolls off on the option play, keeps it himself, has up field at the 40, 45, he's across midfield, and finally dragged out of bounds at the Riverside 40. They're going to say he stepped out at the 43-yard line. Well, that's something that Sean Seibert adds to this offense, Bill. Not only his passing arm, but on the option play, he's just as dangerous as, that, as anybody that he passes it to. And Sean Seibert has rushed very well this season. Right, he's had uh, 282 yards, I believe it is, rushing so far this season. 5.8 average. So when he carries the ball, he usually picks up some yardage. And right now he has Harvey at the first and 10 at the Riverside 43-yard line. They stay in the tee, back to pass, Seibert, he hits green, he's inside the 35, to the 30, down to the 20, and finally dragged down to the 16-yard line of Riverside. Well, it's something that Riverside, uh, it's obviously something that the, the Harvey coaches saw in the films last week, Bill, because Riverside last week against Madison was not covering the short players, the players that were going out short. So far, Harvey has been using the short drops and the, and the very quick passes and the short over the middles, and it, they've been used very effectively. So it's first and 10 Harvey at the Riverside 16-yard line. Seibert pitches it out to Noble, running to the left, has some room, gets by one man, another, he's down to the 10, and finally steps inside and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Great move by Greg Noble to get around that wall of tacklers. 96-yard drive in seven plays. And they did it in just a little over three minutes. 8.56 remaining in the first quarter, and Harvey has a lead of 6 to nothing. Now the Jim Cole on to try for the extra point. Greg Noble with a great move. I thought he was going to be driven out of bounds. He cut back in and took it in for the touchdown. Fake. And now they try for a two-point conversion on the fake, and it looks like they're going to come up short. Running the football was Vargas. Well, they tried a uh, sneak play. They always line up part of the team off to the left side. Usually come back to the center to go for the extra point. This time they didn't. It fails, and Harvey leads 6 to nothing. We'll be back with a Harvey kickoff after this message. Stop in at City Cyclery, located at 670 Mentor Avenue in Painesville, or at Bicycles and Exercisers, located at 29145 Euclid Avenue in Wycliffe. Stop in and check out the big sale on Schwinn Bicycles just in time for Christmas, or stop in and inquire about the first national indoor bicycle race that will be held November 10th through... Well, Frank 
Oakley said it was going to be an offensive game. It took Harvey uh, just a little over three minutes to score a touchdown, and now Riverside gets its first chance. Yeah, well, with plays of 27, 16, 16 yards, 20 yards on passing and running, well balanced, it's very tough to stop. Jim Cole will do the kicking off at his own 40-yard line. And he gets a high driving kick down to the 15-yard line. It's dropped by Riverside, picked up. And the ball carrier, Schaefer, is going to be grabbed and pulled down at the 17-yard line. So both teams have trouble with a kickoff. That time, John Schaefer trying to take that driving kick from Colo. Dropped the football and was able to pick it up and get it back to the 17-yard line. I'm sure there's plenty of cold hands out there. Before the game, the wind was whipping pretty pretty well through the stadium, and there, there could be some very cold hands down there and just not able to handle the football. Uh, the, the little bit of wetness that they can get to handle the football dries up very quickly in the wind. Matt Rupert, the quarterback, he's going to send Schaefer in motion. He drops back, looking to pass, fires one out, hits his man, and caught by uh, number 24 coming down the sidelines across the 30-yard line and up to the 35. That was Dan Brennan, the flanker. And a first down for Riverside on their first play from scrimmage. Well, both teams are right away showing that they're coming. They're going to come out with the quick passing game. They're going to be patient. They're not going to try to try to uh, go deep on anybody. Try to challenge these safeties, and they're just going to be very patient with their offense. They go to the eye this time, and a handoff goes to Schaefer running over the left side. Good yardage out to about the 40-yard line. The official is going to say just across the 40, so it's a gain of about six yards. Call it the 41, bring up a second down and four. Not only, Bill, are we seeing two of the most talented quarterbacks and two of the most talented running backs in this game, we are also seeing two of the best offensive lines, and they will push. They will get a good push for their running backs and good protection for their quarterbacks. Rupert keeps his team in the eye. Dink is flanked out wide on the right side. It goes to Schaefer, running over the left side, fighting for yardage, close to the first down, but stopped a little bit short at the 49. Well, we've, seen, 44. We've, we've seen John Schaefer so far twice, and right now it, it usually is in, uh, Andre Roach, who is a very good fullback for this team. He's only averaging about 3.3 yards a carry on the season, but all of those have been very important carries. They usually use them in this kind of a situation. I would doubt that any of them will run outside the guards. <laughs> He's a big back. Oh, Matt Rupert. And he gives it to Schaefer instead. It comes over the left side, gets across the 45-yard line. It's hit hard and dropped. Big time. That's enough for the first down. I heard that hit way up here, Bill. And I tell you what, uh, what helped Schaefer get that first down was Andre Roach running right up the middle uh, with the lead block. I think that was Pete Rivera who made the hit on that play. down for the Beavers and they keep their drive going. I think uh, one of the coaches uh, was quoted this week as saying that the, with these two powerful offenses, somebody's going to shoot themselves and stall their own drives. First down here, Schaefer coming, trying to go to the right side and this time coming in to hit him was Aaron Green and dropped him for a lot, for, a, for about a gain of a yard. They're going to spot it at uh, it doesn't look like they're going to give him anything. Give anything. Yeah, it's still about the 47-yard line. Well, Riverside tried to counterplay something that worked for Harvey a little bit earlier, and uh, Aaron Green was right there coming in from his defensive position and was not fooled by the counter in the misdirection. Green has good size for a defensive end, 6'2", 227-pounder. This time they split their receivers wide on each side of the field, stay in the eye. Rupert with a long count, now drops back, fires a quick one out, he hits the dink, he's at the Harvey 40, and he's finally grabbed and pulled down by Sean Seibert at the Harvey 32-yard line. Well, Coach Don Anderson for Riverside and, and Matt Rupert, the quarterbacks as well, if, if Seibert and Harvey can do this, I think we can do this as well. A little quick opener right, a quick in, and Bedink, who is the leading receiver for these Beavers and the leading receiver in the county, if I'm not mistaken, Bill, and he slipped a little bit. They've got a little bit of sawdust down down there, the, the couple of wet spots and muddy spots that are on this field, he did uh, slip a little bit, making that cut. Uh, otherwise, he would have had a little bit more yardage out of that. 
It's time to go back to a one-back formation. And it's Andre Roach getting the handoff. Coming to the right side. He breaks open. He's at the Harvey 20. He gets past one man and then is hit and dropped at the five-yard line. And hit hard he was. John Seibert came over. He was able to elude Seibert. But then it was hit by a couple of Harvey tacklers. They're going to spot him down at the seven-yard line. But Riverside Beavers have first and goal to go. Well, we were talking about Andre Roach's uh, power running, Bill. We just saw him for the first time this year that we have seen him go outside. And he showed some speed and some moves to get down there. Well, the Beavers with a first down and goal to go. 5.20 to go in the first quarter. Rupert hands it off to Schaefer. Comes to the left side. Spins off a tackle. Is dropped at the five. Aaron Green finally coming over, pouncing on him at that point. He'll put it right out of the five, so it's second down, goal to go. Well, here's where Riverside cannot, cannot waste this opportunity to get into the end zone. They cannot just go down for the field goal. They have three tries to get it in. They've got three more tries from here. They have to get it into the end zone. They cannot let Harvey get up by more than, more than a few points. Rupert on second down, drops back to pass, fires one out on the right side, intended for Bedink, and uh, oh, thrown behind him a little bit, or to the side of him. Well, that's a very tough pass. That was a little flare out, and that, that pass has to have enough velocity to get by the defender defending the, per the, the the receiver that it's intended for and get into the receiver's hands over his shoulder, and that is a very tough pass to complete. Jim Polo was out on the coverage for Harvey, so it's going to bring up third down. Still goal to go from the five-yard line. Andre Roach, the only setback, as Schaefer goes in motion to the right. And Rupert dropping back, looking right, fires it out, has Schaefer, Brandon there, and he's in for the touchdown. Dan Brennan got a step on Jim Colo, took the pass at the one-yard line and stepped in for the touchdown. Well, I tell you what, Bill, both of these quarterbacks have had excellent, excellent protection so far. Matt Rupert is 3 of 4 with a touchdown at 43 yards, and Sean Seibert is 3 of 3 for 55 yards. Now Riverside lines up their players on the left side, but they're going to come over to go for the kick. As they can take the lead, Dan Brannon will kick it from the 10-yard line. Mike Wells holder. Good snap. Kick is up. Line drive is through the uprights. And Riverside takes the lead at 7-6. And we'll be right back here at Jack Britt Memorial Field after this message. There's a special kind of attachment between a car and a car's owner, and that kind of attachment calls for special care for the car. So when you need parts and accessories for your car, you need All Mechanics Auto Supply. With winter drawing near, All Mechanics Auto Supply has everything you need to winterize your car. Antifreeze, windshield wiper solvent, belts, and more. All Mechanics Auto Supply, now with locations on North State Street in Painesville, Vine Street in Willowick, and Chillicothe Road in Chesterland. Bill Strachey, Frank Baccarillo back here at Recreation Park in Painesville as the Battle of Painesville goes on. Riverside just coming up with that touchdown and an extra point kick to take a 7-6 lead, and it's, so far it's been just as advertised, Frank. Absolutely, Bill. I tell you what, these are two of the most powerful offenses in, in the county, and it, one of the things also is these are two very good defenses, but neither of these defenses have really come up against these type of offenses. So it'll be Dan Brannon kicking off. Once again, Greg Noble back deep to receive, flanked by Chris Alston and Eddie Gant. Brannon, who caught that touchdown pass from Matt Rupert. He caught two of the passes on that uh, very fine 83-yard drive. Once again, he hits a line drive, and as Vargas trying to one-hop it, missed it. Noble picks it up at the 21, looking for some room to run. Tries to get to the outside, and he's going to be grabbed and pulled down inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. I'd say, <laughs> Bill, special teams for both of these squads are just so fired up. That, that they're just the, the the receiving team hasn't been able to do anything and the and the coverage team has just come flying down and, and able to come in very quickly. They say Noble's forward progress was a 19-yard line, so that's where Harvey will start play. 
Sean Seibert brings his team out, lines him up in the tee, hands the ball off to Austin, looking for room up the middle, fights his way out to the 25-yard line. So he picked up about six on that first down play. Austin had a great hole up the middle as well. Very good blocking, very very well executed blocking, Bill. Going in behind the center, Mike Colgrove on that one. It'll bring a, a second down at four. Split out wide left, Phillips flanked wide right, Noble goes in motion to the right. And Seibert on the option comes outside, keeps the ball himself, looking for some running room. A flag goes down, two flags are down, and Seibert is tripped up short of a first down. Noble moved upfield a little too soon. He went in motion and he started to move upfield before the snap. And I don't know what this other flag over here is for, but we just might have offsetting penalties. Officials will confer. They're talking with Seibert. Seibert was dragged down at the 27-yard line. Well, we have offsetting penalties. I'm not sure what the penalty was against uh, Riverside. That looks like a loss of down signal. I didn't. <laughs> they put the ball back at the 25-yard line. It'll stay second down and four for Harvey. Mike Spikes checking into the Harvey lineup for the play from Coach Dick Beeler. We didn't mention the two coaches here. <laughs> I guess they've been around so long. We got so used to them. We don't, didn't think they needed to be mentioned. Dan, uh, Don Anderson, rather, for Riverside and Dick Beeler for Harvey. On second down, Seibert fakes the handoff, now tries a pass, going downfield and batted away by Mark Pomfrey as he was falling down. It was a wobbly pass, I believe tipped as Seibert was trying to throw it. And like a dying quail, it came down. Noble and Pomfrey both had a shot at it. Neither one could get it. Well, for the first time, the quarterback had pressure on him. Both sides of the pocket collapsed. Seibert had absolutely nowhere to go. He just heaved that ball up. Noble was actually breaking free behind, behind Pomfrey, but the pass was well into thrown, and Pomfrey slipped trying to get back to it. Otherwise, it would have been intercepted. third down, the handoff goes to Austin, looking for runner off the left side, keeps driving and gets close to the 30-yard line. And it looks like he's got first down. Right the it. Wasn't much of a hole, but he got the most out of it. And uh, let's see where they're, no, they're going to signal first down. So the Red Raiders able to pick up the first down on this drive. Uh, exactly 10 yards gain there. <laughs> 2.50 remaining here in the first quarter of this football game. Riverside on top, 7-6. Harvey with a football at their own 30-yard line. Seibert gives the ball off to Austin. He's tripped up, dives over a pile at the line of scrimmage out to the 31. Gets one yard on the play. Actually, uh, almost looks like they gave, gave him a very good spot. Second down and nine coming up. with that T formation in the backfield. Scott back, looks at pass, he's hit, but gets away from his man, fires a pass on, it's incomplete, almost intercepted. Over on the coverage for Riverside was Russ Purnace. Well, this time the Riverside defense is starting to throw a few stunts up front, and they are also blitzing a linebacker as they did on that one. He came in untouched, but it's the athletic ability of Sean Seibert that allows him to get that football off in the first place. But once again, like you said, Bill, it was very close to being intercepted. Okay, third been long as Dowdy and Spikes are the men split wide on each side. Noble goes in motion to the right. And Seibert back to pass, rolling right. Looks upfield, now fires one over the head of Mike Spikes, incomplete. He had him up at the 45, open first down yardage, but overthrew this time. So Harvey will be forced to punt the football away. 
And this is one of the things that, that one of the coaches was quoted on this week, Bill. It's the it's it will be the in in of ineffectiveness of one of the offenses during a certain drive that could mean the difference in this game. No cyber will go back to punt, standing back inside his 20-yard line. Bedink and Young go back deep for Riverside. Good snap. Cyber gets a kick away. It's going to end over in. It's going to hit. And bounce past Young who tried to grab it. It rolls down inside the 25-yard line. Harvey falls on it. And I think they thought that it had touched Young, but the official signal it will be Riverside's ball. Well, first of all, uh, Young should not have gone gone reaching for that football, but uh, he, he was lucky that he did not touch it. Ball is spotted down at the 22-yard line of Riverside. So the Beavers will take over with just a minute, 38 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Our first quarter. <laughs> uh, hurry this game along. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> Seven to six, Riverside on top. Schaefer in motion. Going to the right, back to pass. Rupert fires one out. He has Schaefer. Schaefer's hit and dropped at the 26-yard line. He'll get about four yards in the play, and that was for Harvey, number 15. Mike Celsius. Mike Celsius in that uh, defensive backfield. Didn't have you on my death chart. three yards, putting it right on to 25. Second down and seven. This time the Beavers flood the right side, then send Schaefer back to the left side on the flanker, and Rupert's going to call for timeout. A little confusion on the play. So wisely, Matt Rupert calls for timeout. We've got a break in the action. It's Riverside 7, Harvey 6. We'll be right back after this message. Do yourself a favor. If you're thinking of buying or selling a home, don't just employ the first person or company you talk to unless you're absolutely sure you have the very best. That's the advice of Sherry Lorick of Century 21 Launders and Associates. When Sherry talks with clients who seem unsure about who to employ, she encourages them to get another opinion. It's important that the client and the realtor are comfortable with one another. For more information, call 352-2100 or 946-7588 and talk with one of Century 21's professionals. Everyone needs a finding place for their home repair needs. Needs like tools, paint, and plumbing for the interior or exterior of their home or business. That finding place is Joggin Hardware at 23 South State Street in Painesville. But Joggins has more than just tools and paint. Joggins carries hard-to-find Carhartt work clothes and lacrosse boots. Make Joggins Hardware on South State Street your finding place. Joggins Hardware, where people say, if it's hardware, it's here. 43 seconds remaining in the first period, and Riverside with the football, second down and seven from their own 25. Schaefer went over the sidelines to talk with Anderson. They sent Schaefer screen away. If I'm not mistaken, this is Riverside's first third down attempt. Right, third down and seven, their first big play of the night. Rupert back to pass. He's rushed out of the pocket. Now rolls to the left, runs with the football, tries to dive for the first down out at the 31, 32-yard line, and he'll be very close. Rupert did the right thing of, tur of turning it upfield. His, his receivers were very well covered downfield, and also Harvey was shot two linebackers in on the blitz, and they were not able to get him. That's the good protection I was talking about that these offensive lines have for both teams. They're going to measure for it. And it'll be the end, of the, the end of the quarter as well. So we'll check and see if they're not at first down or not. And... Uh, going to be inches short. We're going to have a big play to start the next quarter. We'll be right back for that after this message. Mary Jane's Hair Affair at 222 East Main Street in Painesville is the Family Hair Care Center. At Mary Jane's Hair Affair, you're not just another number. You're number one. At Mary Jane's Hair Affair, you get that personal touch that you deserve. From fine hairstyling, coloring, and expert hair care to manicures, pedicures, and ear piercing. Mary Jane's Hair Affair at 222 East Main Street in Painesville is where you want to go for that special touch. Stop in or call them at 357-6587. Mary Jane's Hair Affair. Fair. Well, we got a big play coming up for the Riverside Beavers. They measured for that first down and came up inches short. 
So they've got a fourth down and inches to go at the their own 32-yard line. And I think I think the only reason why that word is plural, Bill, because I think it's two. No, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll see what kind of a gambling man Donnie Anderson is. And it looks like he's going to send uh, his punting unit out on the field. Ah, uh, that's. He had his uh, regular unit in there, but now they switch and send the punting unit out. I don't think he liked the size of that middle linebacker out over there for Harvey. Okay, it's Spalding back to, in punt formation, saying it at his 20. They can still go for the fake, however. But they snap it back. Spalding will punt it away. He gets up into the breeze. Good spiral. Harvey will let it hit at the 38-yard line. It rolls down to the 30, down to the 29, and Riverside will down it. So the Red Raiders hold it by inches and take over the football at their own 29-yard line. Uh, well, Bill, after each team had a first possession touchdown drive, both of these defenses have started to get into this game, and they're starting to hold. Well, each team has had one successful drive, one that stalled. Now Harvey gets its third chance as Sean Seibert brings his team out of the huddle. They go into that one-and-shoot formation, and Seibert dropping back, rolling right, looking to pass. Fires it out. It's off the hands of... Mike Dowdy, or rather Rusty Phillips, he was hit as the ball arrived, and it squirted off his hands. There's Rob Meckage coming up on the coverage on the play for Riverside. Well, I think, I think right now, Bill, this is we've, we've seen Sean Seibert do this so much this year. He has a very good opening drive as far as numbers go, and then all of a sudden he just starts misfiring. But he'll warm up again, and he will start hitting his receivers. He's been uh, slightly overthrowing and underthrowing them lately. To a T formation this time. Pitch it out to Noble running to the left side. There's no hole. He grabbed and pulled down short of the line of scrimmage. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they're giving him about a loss of a yard on that one. Archer on the tackle. Which Archer? Which Archer? <laughs> got two of them there in that defense. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry, it was Trevor Howard. I had the wrong, I was looking at the wrong number. Okay, Trevor Howard with the stop, and Harvey Pace with a third down, and a little more than 10 yards to go. Seibert looking to pass, fires a quick hitter out to Green. Green grabs it, shakes off a tackle. He goes to the 40, to the 45, and finally drops at the 47-yard line. And once again, coming up to make the hit was Russ Pernas for Riverside, but the Red Raiders get a first down on a great catch and run by Aaron Green. Wasn't a great catch, but it was a good run. <laughs> Very good run because it looked like he was going to be stopped before the first down marker, and he put a nice move on, and then it was a good, very good open field tackle. So Harvey with a first down at their own 47. <clears throat> Sean Seibert, quarterback, takes the handoff to Noble, gives it to Austin. He's hit in the backfield and dropped. Ball came loose, but I think the officials are going to rule that Austin was down. Well, Mike Pomfrey was not fooled. That was sort of a delayed, a delayed counterplay, and Noble got the handoff coming from the left, going to the right, and Pomfrey was not fooled. He was in the backfield. Knocked down, back close to the 45-yard line, a loss of two. Harvey will have a second and 12. They haven't been able to do too much with their running game against the defensive front line of Riverside. This time, Seibert takes the handoff, drops back to pass. He's rushed, and he's going to be dropped back at the 43-yard line as, once again, the Beavers came pouring through, and this time there was an archer in there, Chris Archer, on the stop. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if that was a miscommunication or not. It looked like they were trying another counterplay, Bill. The two backs started coming in at the same time. It looked like Seibert just faked to both of them and all of a sudden backed off like he was going to pass, but I still think it was a running play because some of his offensive linemen were downfield. That's why he tried to turn it up himself. Well, it's another loss of a yard, third and 13 coming up. This one will be 
a passing play as Seibert rolls out to the right. He's hit, fires the ball, and it's almost picked off again as it was thrown inside of Mike Spikes down on the sidelines and uh, Russ Furness over there on the coverage once again, and this time Seibert was throwing it as he was being hit. Well, this is the third time that, that Seibert was being hit as he was throwing the ball. That was the third time it was slightly underthrown and almost picked off. So Harvey has a fourth and 13, and once again, Seibert will have to punt it. This time he'll be punting from south to north. We'll see if the ball travels any better that direction. High snap. He is able to jump up and get it. Gets the kick away. A driving kick. Mike Bedin comes up and grabs the ball as he falls down at the 27-yard line, 28-yard line. Well, Riverside obviously did not have a very big rush coming on that one. They were setting up a return because if they did, Seibert had, had to really take his time to go way up for that ball and come down and reset himself to punt the ball. Riverside did not have a good rush on. They could have possibly gone for a block in that occasion. The Beavers have the ball back at their own 28. Matt Rupert to go into a one-back formation with Schaefer in motion to the right. Back to pass. Rupert fires it out and just picked the clip in the air by Cole. Picked off by Celsius for Harvey, who brings it back to the 40-yard line. Stepped in front of the intended receiver, batted the ball in the air, and Mike Celsius picked it off. Well, that definitely was not the, the quarterback's fault on that one, Bill. The receiver curled in to get that ball, and as you said, it was batted high in the air, and it gave another, another defender plenty of time to run underneath it to pick that ball off. Has it just inside the Riverside 40 yard line. Now, now the, the turnover. Now the wind's starting to kick up again. This time McQuigley goes in motion to the left for Harvey. They give the ball to Novo. He steps inside a tackler and fights his way down to the 30 yard line. Close to a first down. Looks like he was going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. Was able to step inside the would be tackler and picked up nine yards in the play. Well, that's the danger of Noble. Once he once he gets by that first tackler, he is very dangerous coming into the secondary because he just picks his spots and he goes for them. And he's so small, he's very hard to see. Very hard to judge his speed as well. One well, of the officials now signaling that we've had out a equipment problem. I think Todd Latz is heading to the sidelines. Apparently has a problem with some of his equipment. But second and one for Harvey is their fans on the east side begin to, their chant. Seibert sets the team up in the eye, gives it to Austin, big hole over the left side. He fights his way down inside the 25 to the 24 yard line and a Harvey first down. Like you said, Bill, good hole up there, and it looked like Sean Seibert mishandled the ball to begin with, but again, they're using some very good misdirection, and the Harvey li or the Riverside linebackers seem to be a little bit confused. Yeah, one of their linebackers out in that play, Todd Lance, may have had something to do with it. So first and ten for Harvey at the 24, and here's a pitch back to Noble trying to run to the right. He cuts back. A bit of over pursuit that time for Riverside. Riverside should know not to do that against Greg Noble. You've got to stay in your lanes. You've got to stay in your tackling lanes because he will cut back at any time, and that's exactly what he does to you. Well, the Red Raiders now will see whether they go for a two point conversion once again. They're going to call for timeout before they try it. With 6.56 remaining in the first half of this football game, let's take a break for this message. The smell and taste of a New England fall day in a rustic turn-of-the-century atmosphere. That's Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River. Come for the famous lake perch and walleye, or tasty steamed clams, or try the Saturday prime rib special for only $9.95. 
Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River is open Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Brennan's Fish House for the best seafood this side of New England. Jack Britt Memorial Field, the Harvey Road Raiders have just scored to take the lead at 12 to 7. And now we'll see whether or not they uh, go for a two-point conversion or a one-point attempt. They tried a two-point conversion after their first touchdown, failed on it. Riverside was able to score and take the lead by kicking the extra point. So Harvey had a disadvantage here. Uh, they need the two-point conversion to keep pace. It looks like they are going for two. Right, they're lining up the regular passing formation, and they're going to send Green in motion to the left side. And Seibert rolling back, pitches the ball off to Alston. He's in and drop, or drops the football, and Riverside recovers it. But we have a flag on the play, Bill. Well, hold the horses here. We'll see what the call is. Okay, it's, it's illegal motion on, on Harvey, and that should be declined. They talk it over with Riverside. They stopped the play when Austin was unable to handle the pitch. It is declined, so the score remains. Harvey 12, Riverside 7. We'll be right back here at Jack Pitt Memorial Field after this message. You're listening to the Battle of Painesville on Lake County's favorite radio station, AM 1460 WBKC Painesville. This is Jim Long at Granary Field here in Ashtabula, and the score right now with just under eight minutes to go in the first half, Ashtabula leads Kanye at 7-6. Mike Carriher scored on a 55-yard interception return for Kanye, and Sean Elgood has just scored from 46 yards out for Ashtabula. That's the story here. Now back to Bill and Frank. Okay, Jim, thank you for that report. Ashton Villa with a one-point lead. They got a close ball game going on up there at Ashton Villa. Right here, it's 12-7 Harvey as Jim Colo gets set to kick it off. Ball teed up at the 40, and this time he gets a high driving kick. Schaefer will take it back at his seven-yard line, heads towards the middle of the field, looking for some running room. It's hit and knocked off his feet at the 25-yard line. I believe it was Marty McGee came over and made the hit on that play. Lost the moves and eyes from the fans, and... The Harvey side. I tell you what, Bill, these guys are really hitting heavy out here. They want this game very, very badly. Let's see if Riverside responds to that touchdown drive by Harvey. Well, it came following the only turnover so far in the ball game. The intercepted pass by Mike Celsius. Well, Matt Rupert sets his team up. Once again, our Roach is the only setback. Now Schaefer will drop back and line up, or he just goes, stays in motion. And the handoff goes to Roach, trying the right side. And he gets about back to the line of scrimmage, perhaps just across the 25. I think what they wanted to do, they sent, they sent Schaefer in motion from the left side to the to the right. He was almost in the tailback position when he got when the snap of the ball. I think what they wanted to do was have that that Harvey defense worry about Schaefer getting the ball on a pitch out. That really did not work. On the finesse him into thinking he was just going to line up back there in the eye. They snapped it while he was still in motion. So it's no gain, second down and ten. This time Schaefer lined up on the right, heads to the left, and they pitch it out to Schaefer. Running to the left side, he's at the 25, and across the 30, tripped up by Vargas as he gets across the 30-yard line out to the 32. Bill, that was a set yard line. Okay, the, 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 that was a setup play, Bill, from the last one. It, it was basically the same thing going the other way. This time they did pitch it to him, and he was able to turn it upfield for about eight yards. Going to bring up a third down and two. Oh, Matt Rupert lines him up in the eye this time. Schaefer the tailback. Roach at the fullback slot. Handoff goes to Schaefer diving into the pile. He breaks loose, stays on his feet, gets out to the 45-yard line. First down for Riverside. There should be an unintentional face mask, but I don't think they're going to call it. I don't think a ref was in a good position to see that. There was, he left it, got his hand off of there, whoever it was. It, all I saw was an arm. Got his hand off of there very quickly. Well, 
But once again, there's that good blocking of that offensive line for the Beavers. Well, they get the ball off to their own 45-yard line, 438 remaining in the first half. And Riverside with a first down. Rupert back to pass. He's rushed out of the pocket, fires it out, has his man falling at the midfield stripe. He's hit and dropped. As Salsi is over there on the tackle for Harvey. But a gain of five yards on the play by Spalding. Very good protection. He did start to get flushed out of the pocket, blitzing a linebacker in there, Bill. Rolled to the right, and Spalding did the right thing. He came back once he saw his quarterback was in trouble, and he was wide open about five yards downfield. Once again, that's Schaefer flanked out on the right side. Wokes the lone setback, and back to pass is Rupert. He's rushed. He's hit and dropped. As Vargas, Miguel Vargas comes breaking through untouched and sacks him back at the 43 yard line. What set that up, Bill, is, is Harvey blitzed both linebackers in that position, and of course, Vargas, one of the better linebackers in the county, and he came in from the blind side, and, and Rupert did not see him at all. So they lose about seven yards. It's going to bring up a third and 12. play here for the Beavers with 3.15 remaining in the first half. They trail Harvey 12-7. Rupert drops back, flags go down, he's going to fire one out, he has Gary Young wide open and he drops the football. Gary Young was turning around, I think, <laughs> looked a little, turned around a little too quick before he had the ball in his hands securely, and it slipped out of his fingertips. I don't know how he did it, because I was trying to figure out where that flag was coming down, and we have got an illegal procedure penalty on Riverside, and that one's going to be denied. Right, well, that takes away an opportunity. They've been better off to, <laughs> to have the penalty and get the play over, because now they're going to look at a third down and 12, and uh, obvious punny down. Uh, with 3-0-3 to go, perhaps it's not so obvious. Well, they're going to send the punny unit out. Rusty Phillips will go back deep for Harvey. So Judd Spalding set to punt it. Standing at his own 32-yard line. Gets a good snap and gets the kick away. Oh, High good one. kick. Rusty Phillips coming over, drops the football, picks it, tried to pick it up. He's hit. Ball is loose. And it looks like Riverside has it. Rusty Phillips tried to make the catch. and ball bounced away from him. He had a chance to fall on it. Instead, tried to pick it up. Before he could get it in his grasp, he just hit. The ball came loose, and Riverside recovers it at the Harvey 24-yard line. Bill, that's one of the first things they teach you. Whenever you are a ball handler and you drop that ball and you've got a bunch of people coming at you, you fall on that thing. You don't try to pick it up to try to make something better out of it. There's less than three minutes left to go in the first half, and now Riverside has got some very, very good field position. And once again, we've got a turnover, Bill, and let's see what Riverside can do with it after Harvey had a touchdown after a Riverside turnover. And Rupert back. Back to pass. Once again, he's rushed. He fires on downfield. Has a man there, but the pass is... Is it caught? Yes, it was. It was. It was caught. And Mike Badate made the grab. It looked like Jim Colo had a chance to bat it away, but apparently couldn't reach it. Mike Badate calls it in at the Harvey two-yard line. What a great pass by Matt Rupert. Once again, he was being rushed from the blind side, Bill, and he just put that ball up in the corner right where it had to be. And one of the best receivers on this field, Mike Bedding, just ran right under it. And Colo, not a, not a bad defensive back himself, just was not able to reach that. So it's first down, goal to go from the Harvey two-yard line. Roach and Schaefer lined up in the eye for Riverside. And it goes to Schaefer running to the right side. He's hit and pulled down short of the goal line. He's, they're going to move it back a yard. Yes, they are. And they're going to move it back to the three-yard line, so he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. However, they uh, have plenty of time to go for the touchdown here with second down. More time to use, probably the better off they'll be. Absolutely, because both of these teams have big strike capability, and I think Harvey has the uh, more so than Riverside. 
minute and a half remaining in the first half. And here's a pitch back to Schaefer running to the right side. Tried to get outside and is grabbed and pulled down. Ankle tackle made out there. Looks like he moved it up to about the one maybe. Jim Cole, the man on the stop, are gonna spot him at the one yard line. So it's third down, still goal to go. And the clock approaching a minute left to play in this first half. Riverside still has two timeouts left. Beavers in no hurry as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Matt, Matt Rupert stays in the eye, gives it to Roach. He dives over the middle of the line into the end zone for the touchdown. Andre Roach diving over the pile. Goes in from one yard out. And Riverside takes the lead at 13 to 12. And like we said, Bill, Andre Roach is very, very tough to stop in that, in that position. That's where they go to him all the time, and that's where he is so, so extremely effective. Now we'll see now if they go for the two-point conversion or the one-point. They have the one-point advantage. They might want to try to put it up by a field goal, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. Well, Matt Rupert sets his team up. And he drops back, looking to pass Wide the open. man open, and hits him for the touchdown. That was number 40 out there on the reception, Garth, Garth, Garth Case. And the two-point conversion is good, and Riverside takes a three-point lead, 15 to 12, with 48 seconds to go in the first half. We'll be right back after this message. Stop in at City Cyclery, located at 670 Mentor Avenue in Painesville, or at Bicycles and Exercisers, located at 29145 Euclid Avenue in Wycliffe. Stop in and check out the big sale on Schwinn Bicycles just in time for Christmas, or stop in and inquire about the first national indoor bicycle race that will be held November 10th through November 20th at City Cyclery, 670 Mentor Avenue in Painesville, or at Bicycles and Exercisers, 29145 Euclid Avenue in Wycliffe. Now 15 to 12, the Riverside Beavers have the lead by a field goal, however, they haven't kicked one yet. <laughs> two missed extra point opportunities by Harvey, and a two point conversion and a one point conversion for Riverside. Now with 48 seconds to go, the Beavers will kick it off here in the first half of this football game. Dan Brannon with the ball teed up at the 40. Harvey has Noble and Eddie Gant back deep. And the kickoff. Low kick once again. Vargas goes over and gets past him. Gant will pick it up at the 15-yard line. It tries to head up the left side and is grabbed and pulled down as he crosses the 20 out to the 23-yard line. Now we'll see right off the bat what Dick Beeler has in mind if he wants to go for a quick try to get something downfield very quickly or not, or just fall on the ball and, and go into halftime down by three. Clock is running. There's less than 40 seconds to go in the first half. Seibert brings his team out. They line up in a passing formation. Now they're going to put Noble back in the tee and send him in motion. Seibert holding out on the right side on the option, keeps it himself, tries to head upfield, gets to the 30, and that's as far as he'll go. Adding the pull down there, and it looks like a timeout's gonna be called by the Red Raiders. Option play run by Seibert. He runs it very well, but Riverside was able to shut it down without it getting too much yardage. That play usually with this team can go for big yardage, especially when they're not expecting it. Picked up seven on it, so we've got a second down and three. And we'll keep it right here with just 17 seconds remaining. In the first half, we may have another timeout coming up yet. Just maybe. Now it's 
been a uh, seesaw battles as we expected. The offenses have played well. The defenses uh, have also done a good job, uh, able to stop these high folded offenses on several occasions. But uh, turnovers have been a factor, one for each side. And also, I think the special teams are going to be coming in to play a little bit more of an effect than that we had figured, Bill, because neither receiving team has done very well. Riverside, or Harvey fumbled on one. Harvey has not been able to get out of get out of a hole on their receptions, and, and neither really has Riverside. Well, we'll see what Dick Beeler and Sean Seibert come up with on this second down and three play with 17 seconds to go in the half. He's looking to pass, so almost slipped. Now fires one out, intended for spikes, incomplete over his head. And there was good coverage by the Beavers. They had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players <laughs> back on that coverage. <laughs> they were not going to let anybody get deep on them. And that's basically what you want to do with this kind of field position and this far back and this, this much time on the clock. They just want to make sure they don't get the long one on you. They'll give you the short stuff. Or just make sure you don't get the long gain. 11 seconds to go in the half. Third and three, and there's Quigley in motion for Harvey. Seibert hands the ball off to Noble, looking for some running room up the middle. Has the first down and is pulled down at the 37-yard line. With five seconds to go, and the Red Raiders once again call for a timeout. Yes, they do. <laughs> so we've got timeout on the field with five seconds to go. We still have another message to get in here. Sure do. We'll, we'll do that now and come right back for the last play. Do yourself a favor. If you're thinking of buying or selling a home, don't just employ the first person or company you talk to unless you're absolutely sure you have the very best. That's the advice of P.K. Dolce of Century 21 Launders and Associates. When P.K. talks with clients who seem unsure about who to employ, she encourages them to get another opinion. It's important that the client and the realtor are comfortable with each other. For more information, call 352-2100 or 946-7588 and talk with one of Century 21's professionals. All right, we're back here at Painesville Recreation Park. Just five seconds remaining in the half. Harvey has a first down at the 37-yard line, but just enough time for one more play. Unless there's a defensive penalty on this one, Bill, it looks like they will probably just put it up in the air and try to get it downfield and uh, hope for a defensive penalty because a half cannot end on a defensive penalty. <laughs> and a Hail Mary uh, set up down here. Right, you got three receivers put out wide on the right side, three of the fastest for the Red Raiders, and back to pass is Seibert. He's being rushed, slips away from the grass, and now fires one downfield long. It's put in the air and batted out of bounds as Russ Prentice over on the coverage for the Riverside Beavers. So time runs out. We come to the end of the first half of play. The score stands. Baseball Riverside 15, Baseball Harvey 12. And we'll be right back to recap the first half stats and the scoring after we take a break for this message. Sometimes big companies forget how they became big companies. Not Chicago Title. They never allowed their solid, steady, and consistent commitment to fundamentals become eroded. They understand that attention to detail is crucial to any transaction, be it a local residential conveyance or a national multi-state assignment. That's why they're staffed with skilled... along with Frank Vaccarillo. We're here at Jack Pitt Memorial Field in Painesville Recreation Park at halftime. Painesville Riverside leading over the Harvey Red Raiders 15 to 12. And the fans here, the standing room only fans, are going to get a treat at halftime. Not only the Pine Riverside band to perform, but the uh, Harvey has uh, brought their alumni group down this year, a very excellent alumni band that uh, won honors at the Fairport Mardi Gras this summer. They'll be performing along with the regular Harvey band at halftime, and perhaps we'll be able to get you a chance to hear some of this fine music. Let's look at the scoring in the first half, and on their first possessions, each team was able to take it in for a touchdown. The Red Raiders took the opening kickoff, and after having problems on the staff, had to start from their own four-yard line. They went 96 yards in a little over three minutes to score the opening 
touchdown of the game. Greg Noble went the last 16 yards on a run around the left side for the touchdown, and Harvey had the lead at six to nothing. Red Raiders then tried to run a trick play for the extra point conversion and failed, so it was six nothing Harvey. Then uh, it was Riverside starting as they took the kickoff, started back at their 17 yard line, I believe, and they went all the way for a touchdown with uh, Matt Rupert hitting Dan Brennan with the final five yards on a pass play. The game was 4.36 to go in the first quarter. Brandon then kicks the extra point, and the Riverside Beavers had the lead at 7-6. to six. Both teams then saw their offenses stall, but following an interception by Harvey on a tip pass, uh, by Mac, uh, the interception by Mike Sassis, Harvey starting from uh, around the midfield stripe, able to take it down for the touchdown, and once again, it was Greg Noble on an iffy run, going around the right side, then cutting back to the left, going 24 yards for the touchdown. The Red Raiders tried to go for the two-point conversion. A pitch to Chris Austin was fumbled, and Riverside recovered it, so the two point conversion failed. Harvey led 12 to 7. And then Riverside came back after Harvey had fumbled the ball away on a, a punt after stopping the Riverside drive. The uh, Beavers able to recover the football at the Harvey 24. They took it down to the one yard line on a fine pass to Mike Bedink and then Andre Roach on a third attempt by the Beavers took it in over the middle for the last yard. And then uh, Rupert went for a two point conversion, hit Garth Case with the two-point play as he found him wide open out on the right side and with 48 seconds remaining in the first half, Riverside had taken a 15 to 12 lead and that's the way it stands right now. I had uh, both teams uh, very even on the most of the statistics. There were seven uh, first downs by Harvey, six by Riverside. Each team with one turnover, Harvey intercepting the pass and the Riverside recovering the fumble and only one penalty in the first half. And that was on the opening kickoff. Right, came on the opening kickoff when Harvey lined up offside. They were penalized five yards. There was one other flag thrown, but the penalty was against the Riverside was declined. And there was a couple of offsetting ones down right. there too. And a pair of offsetting ones, and that was it uh, for the first half. So very well played first half of uh, football. And uh, right now a very tight game at 15 to 12. That could go either way. Well, going either way, uh, some of the individual statistics, Bill, for Harvey, as far as rushing goes, Greg Noble, seven carries, 57 yards, and two touchdowns. Both of those touchdown runs showing the Greg Noble that we saw earlier in the season and really haven't seen much of him lately in the season, but that was some vintage Greg Noble on those two touchdown runs. Chris Alston, who has come around the last few games, we saw him, especially in that Ashtabula game when he caught those three those yards. Over on Riverside side, Individual statistics, of course, John Schaefer rushing has got the most yardage for them, 10 carries for 33 yards. Andre Roach has got three carries for 27 yards. Now, that is way and above his average. Of course, he had that 26-yard run off tackle, almost almost an end around there, or around the end where uh, we really haven't seen him do that very much this year. And Matt Rupert had a, had a five-yard scamper himself. Rupert passing is five for nine for 75 yards. He was sacked once for six yards. He threw one interception and one touchdown and also the two-point conversion to make it 15-12. Riverside total yards gross was 140 and uh, subtract that sack, 134 yards total offense. So as far as the statistics go, Harvey has outgained Riverside. The Riverside got the better field position after the turnover. I think that's basically where the difference in, in yardage came. Okay, so uh, it's a very uh, even Stephen football game right now here at halftime. And we'll be back with more right after we take a break for this message. You're listening to The Battle of Painesville on Lake County's favorite radio station, AM 1460 WBKC Painesville. This is Jim Long at Granary Field in Ashtabula. We're at halftime here, and Ashtabula leads 14 to 6. Fonzel Pollard scored from a one yard out with uh, just under a minute to go in the first half. Earlier, Sean Allgood had scored for Ashtabula. Uh, Connie, it's only score and interception return by Mike Carey. Her. So at halftime, once again, Estabula 14 and Connie at 6. Now back to Bill and Frank. Okay, back here at uh, Harvey's Field. Uh, interesting that, that the game up there is staying very close. We expected that too. Uh, you said Connie, perhaps the last team that has a chance to knock Estabula off. 
So uh, both these schools out here tonight are pulling for uh, Conneaut to pick up the uh, victory in that ball game. But uh, regardless of what happens there, the winner of this game will still be in first place, either tied or all alone in first place. So there's a, a lot riding on the outcome, and we're seeing the results of what is a very meaningful game for both schools because we've seen some very fine football. Absolutely. Here. Not only have we seen some very fine football, very well-executed plays, but we have seen some hard hitting up here, Bill. And this is this is very rare when we can hear some of those helmets hitting way up here in the press box, especially with the wind the way it is. We've been hearing those pops down there, and I'm sure those players are feeling it and are going to feel it, especially tomorrow. Well, as we said, we saw a good execution uh, both, by both teams on their first drives. Then, uh, as might be expected, the defenses rolls up to the occasion following that. Uh, the co both coaches have said that uh, it's little things that are going to make the difference in the football game. Uh, and uh, in my own prediction this morning, I said uh, the only way I could see it was who had the most determination. Well, uh, right now, as we look at these two clubs, I'd say uh, both are pretty well equally determined. Uh, we were talking uh, earlier this week with some of the staff up at the radio station, and uh, Paul said that we were we were going through the, 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 the picks of, uh, of the staff, and Paul was taking Harvey because he felt they had more determination because they finally got into a conference and they finally had a chance to win a conference, but Riverside has just as much determination because after, their, after they won the conference championship a few years ago, they've been the bridesmaid the last few years, and they want to get back up on top as well, and, and I don't see, I really don't see, like you said, any difference in determination on this field. That's right. Uh, the, uh, it, it means just as much, you know, and you've been so close three years in a row, you want it badly. And That's course, right. Harvey has been a long time since they were in a position like this. The Red Raiders have done pretty well in the league since they moved in. They've been competitive in both uh, football and basketball. They've uh, run away with the uh, track and the cross-country championships. They've had a, a championship in girls softball. So they've done all right in the conference, but until you win that first football championship, that's right. you don't really feel like you've been a, a dominant team in the league, and uh, that's one thing they, they really are looking forward to, that first football championship, and uh, they see this could be the year to do it. So uh, maybe uh, with a school of Harvey size playing in the league with bigger schools for the most time, they, the opportunities may not come along that often. Right now we've got the bands out on the field, uh, entertaining. Riverside just finished up their portion, and now the Harvey band out, and uh, shortly they'll be joined by the alumni band, and we're going to get a chance to uh, hear some of that music while we're waiting for them to come out. We thought we might look at uh, some of the computer point uh, races that are going on. Of course, no team from Lake County is really in a position to challenge right now. Harvey is in ninth place. Lake Catholic is in ninth place in their divisions, and uh, they both have long shot chances of getting in there. Harvey has to win this game against Riverside tonight to have any hope. Lake Catholic has to beat Chanel tonight and win against St. Joseph next week if they want to get into uh, the rankings. But let's look at uh, winning, a, winning against St. Joseph is uh, very tough even for Lake Catholic right now, but you never know. They could be surprised. Right, well, they gave St. Ignatius a pretty good time in their first game and Ignatius has gone on undefeated and in fact they lead the uh, Division One, Region One standings with 109 points total. Mid Park is in second place. Bria is third. And Euclid is in fourth place right now uh, with a fairly decent margin over Akron Garfield. So those are the top four teams. Riverside is the closest area team from that point. They're down in uh, 16th place last uh, right now with those two losses on their schedule. And uh, as we pointed out before, being a Division One school playing in the league with uh, mostly Division Two and Three teams, they don't stand a lot of chance, even going undefeated, to make it into the uh, computer playoffs unless they're one nine league game is with a very good school and they beat them so it's a uh, it's a little rough on them Minter is the next one uh, they're down in the tie for 22nd place and in the division uh, two rankings for region five the top team is cleveland st joseph despite their three losses they still piled up 86 computer points solon is in second place then comes uh, brexville and they're followed by shard so there's two uh chagrin valley conference teams in the top four and the region five rankings a little farther down is uh, West York at 8th place, and Lake Catholic, as we said, at ninth place. So the Cougars have a lot of people to climb over to try and get up into the race. Madison, the next closest team from this area, down at 19th place. For the uh, Division Three rankings, as we said, uh, Painesville Harvey is in ninth place. They're right behind them is Kinston. Uh, both those teams have a, an outside shot if they can uh, 
go through the rest of their schedule undefeated, but they've got some pretty tough teams ahead of them. Akron St. Vincent St. Mary is the number one team. Youngstown Mooney is second. Campbell Memorial is third. And Akron Hoban is fourth. Now, Hoban is playing St. Joseph tonight. Uh, if Hoban should beat St. Joseph, uh, that's going to kind of discourage any team from all them of moving up into the top four. Campbell Memorial has to play Salem. Salem has a very, very good record, so we've seen that Memorial has a good chance in that. Youngstown Mooney must play Ursuline, and Ursuline has a very good team. In fact, uh, they rank sixth in the division. And uh, St. Mary's takes on Walsh Jesuit tonight. So uh, most of them have tough games, but it's going to be very rough for any teams to move up in those uh, rankings against that competition. For the Division Four rankings, the top teams are uh, St. Thomas Aquinas of Louisville, Ohio. John F. Kennedy of Warren is second. Then comes Canton Central Catholic and Garrettsville Garfield. They're the top four teams. Of course, the closest team from this area is Middlefield Cardinal down in a tie for ninth place. And Hawkins, the uh, team that's been there the past three years, is down in 15th place. And for Division Five, the uh, top team is Mingo Junction, followed by Mogador, Clearview, and then Independence, and Ledmont, the closest team from this area, down in 11th place. Now let's hear a little bit of the bands out on the field. Uh, crowd 
on this Battle of Painesville night in Painesville Recreation Park. The score stands, Painesville Riverside 15, Painesville Harvey 12. We'll be right back with more after this message. Everyone needs a finding place for their home repair needs. Needs like... football weather, Bill, because in the background over there behind the Riverside stands, the trees are starting to turn, turn colors back there. You're right, especially all this week with the with that flash snowstorm that we had. We could have been in a real mess this week. But once again, Mother Nature has said, hey, let's make it some good football weather, and she certainly did. All right, well, Dick Beeler promised me it'd be 55 and sunny all day on Friday. Well, it didn't quite get up there, but it did clear up, and that was uh, good news for the fans who wanted to come out to see this uh, football game. And they've seen a real treat in this first half, uh, Riverside leading 15 to 12 by virtue of having three uh, points from uh, point conversions. Well, Harvey has failed on their uh, two attempts to put extra points on the board, but it's been a very evenly played ball game so far, and uh, we expect to see more of this go on through this because the field has stayed in great shape, and uh, both quarterbacks are probably just starting to get warmed up. I think so. Well, like we said in the first half, uh, Sean Cyber not exactly as accurate as we're used to seeing him, 4-4. 11 for 72 yards. Matt Rupert, 5 for 9 for 75 yards with an interception and a, and a touchdown pass. Uh, both, you're right, both quarterbacks really probably warmed up in that first half as usual, and we should see uh, them shooting the lights out here in the second half because, once again, the field is in very good condition. The receivers can make their cuts very well down there as we saw Greg Noble on those two touchdown runs that he had, and they could definitely make the cuts, and we should see a very big shootout here in this second and half. Uh, we haven't seen John Schaefer get loose yet, and uh, he's a, a person who can also break a game open, just like uh, Greg Noble can, and uh, he's been pretty well contained for the most part. As you said, he's got the, he's a leading uh, rusher so far, but his average is down to around three yards a try, something like that. Uh, so he hasn't really busted loose yet, and that might be something that uh, Don Anderson will try and do this second half, is to figure out a way to spring uh, Schaefer out in the open. On the other side of the coin, uh, coin as far as Harvey goes. We One of the plays we have not seen yet that was so effective against Ashtabula City was that screen pass to, no, uh, to Alston uh, either to the right or the left and those things went for at least 20 yards every time they tried that play. So uh, if, if Harvey gets down a, a touchdown here because Riverside should be getting the ball to, to start this second half if, if Harvey gets down a little bit more or if it's still this close and they're still down we will probably see Dick, Coach Dick Beeler pull that play out of the bag and use that because it's very tough to defend it's very tough to read exactly what they're going to do because it's a, it's a kind of a play where you use that kind of motion and those kind of sets and everything all game long, but all of a sudden you pull out this screen pass and he's got a bunch of blockers in front of him. You never know what Alston is going to be able to do either in the second half. Okay, they're just about ready to go here. Uh, we didn't have a halftime guest because we thought uh, perhaps we might have a chance to interview uh, someone from the Cleveland Browns. We heard reports that uh, some of the Browns uh, might be out to witness this game. Uh, uh, and also the uh, perhaps the quarterback coach for the Cleveland Browns out to take a look at this uh, game. And of course, uh, you've heard the story before that uh, Sean Seibert has been the ball boy at uh, Cleveland Browns camp the, out at Lakeland the past three years. And uh, there had been stories that they might be out. No one showed up here in the press box, so <laughs> we had to go through the interview without the, uh, through the halftime without the interview, but uh, we were able to take up the time. Would have been, would have been nice to uh, talk to talk to quarterback coach Mark Tressman about the quarterbacks out here and seeing what he sees in them and what kind of what kind of future these two young men have out here. Okay, we're set to go. Harvey will be kicking off. Riverside will take possession once again. They're defending the north goal. John Schaefer back on the receiving end. And he's joined back there by number 81, uh, Rich Nicely. And it's going to come down to Nicely. He takes it on the run at the 17-yard line, heads up the right hash marks, gets across the 35, and dropped at the 40-yard line. Very good run back to start the first half. And very good field position for Matt Rupert and the Riverside Beavers. Rich Nicely getting that ball on the run. He had good momentum behind him. And he 
just scooted up those right hash marks for a about a 23-yard return. So first and ten as Matt Rupert lines his team up. He has Schaefer lined up on the right, sends him in motion, hands it off to his fullback Roach going up the middle and all the way up to the 50-yard line down to the 49 of Harvey. Andre Roach, <laughs> we have seen him do more running than, than we're used to seeing him doing, and he's also picking up some big gains. Obviously, the Harvey defense is not paying as much attention to him as as their coaches would like them to, because Andre Roach is usually only used in, in, in very short, short yardage situations. They spot the ball just across the 50 into Harvey territory, so it's first to 10 on the midfield stripe. And this time it's uh, that Roach again up the middle. This time he's stacked up. May have gotten a yard out of it. They thought they saw something and they wanted to try to exploit the middle of that Harvey defense, but this time they were not able to do so. Miguel Vargas among those coming up to plug up the hole that time, so a gain of one. We're making second down and nine. Actually, this is kind of weird. John Schaefer in the first half had 10 carries for 33 yards. Andre Roach now has five carries for 39 yards. Very much an, an unlike a Riverside offense. And you go with the unexpected sometimes, and it'll work. This time, Schaefer on the left side goes in motion to the right. <laughs> Back to pass is Rupert. He's rushed hard. He's grabbed. He's dropped. That was Sandstrom breaking through to make the sack. He didn't take him down, but he tripped him up, and uh, Rupert fell back at the 41-yard line for a loss of nine yards, ten yards on the play. Once again, Harvey comes in with a blindside blitz because Rupert likes to roll to the right when he's using the rolling pocket. He rolled to the right. Harvey came with a blindside blitz and was able to get him from the backside. So it brings up third and 19 from the Riverside 41-yard line. Rupert dropping back, looking to pass, being rushed, fires one out, he's got Young down on the side and it's incomplete. Coverage provided by, out there for Harvey by uh, Phillips. Rusty Phillips had very good position. Pass was thrown well, but uh, well covered that time, so it's going to bring up a punting situation. My sheet blew away, I need to <laughs> borrow this for a few minutes. Judd Spaulding standing back inside his 30-yard line. Phillips back for Harvey. Good snap. Kick of the way is almost blocked, and we're going to have a flag thrown as Green came in. He missed the block. His momentum, however, took him right in to the legs of Judd Spaulding. And that's the danger of trying to get too close to a punter when you're trying to block a punt. You've got to be a few feet in front of him to try to block that punt. <laughs> And Riverside is got going to have new life. Well, the second time that Harvey has given Riverside new life on a punt situation. Last time it cost him a touchdown, and this time it's going to give Riverside a first down. Uh, wait a minute, it's not going to be quite a first down, or is it? It uh, should be an automatic first automatic down. Automatic first down. <laughs> It'll bring it all the way down to the Harvey 44-yard line. 15-yard penalty for running into the kicker. Now we'll see what the Beavers can do with this second opportunity. Definitely want to make the most of a, of a goof like that. They're in the eye. There's a pitch to Schaefer running to the right side, looking for some room. He's grabbed and pulled down as he gets to about the 43-yard line. Gain of a yard. Second down coming up. Rupert looking over to the sidelines for a play from Coach Don Anderson. Anderson in his seventh year guiding his team, former star at Riverside. They're in the eye. And there's a pitch to Schaefer. This time he's running to the left side. He's hemmed in by Vargas. Slips past him and fights his way down to the 40-yard line. And he gets about three yards on it. Miguel 
Vargas coming over to pitch that play inside. It'll bring up third and about six yards to go for the first down. It looked like on that play, it looked like Schaefer was going to get a good kick out block and he'd be able to cut it back up. But very good pursuit by the Harvey defense was able to negate any kind of big gain that Schaefer could have turned that into. Schaefer flanked out on the right side this time. And back to pass is Rupert. He uh, gets some protection this time, fires it out to Brandon, and he drops the football. Brandon was looking upfield once again before he got the football because he would he, he first of all he heard footsteps, but if he was able to turn the corner, he probably could have gotten at least first down yardage out of it. But you got to hang on to the football before you do that. Just a little quick pass thrown out, thrown out on the right flat, but Brandon dropped it, so it brings up fourth down, and once again he. Well, the Beavers are going to go for it on fourth and six this well, time. Schaefer is lined up very deep. We could see a, a punt from this formation. And they pitch it back to Schaefer, and he will punt it. And he gets it high in the air. And Harvey will let it hit. It's going to take a Riverside roll down inside the five-yard line, and they'll down it. Well, that ball took off right away after it hit the ground first. It looked like it was going to go flying into the end zone, but it just sort of came up short and died. Harvey is 95 yards away from the end zone, but the thing is, the very first very first drive of the game, they were 96 yards away, and they were able to put it in. And they haven't done as well when they've been closer. Okay, it's Harvey's turn to take over the football at their own five-yard line. We've got eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter of this football game. Riverside on top, 15 to 12. Sean Seibert hands it off to Noble, finds some running room off the left side, then it's hit hard as he gets him up to the 10-yard line. Hole opened up, but was closed quickly. They're going to spot it on the nine, so again... About five yards, second down five coming up. That's what Noble is dangerous when he get, can get by the line of scrimmage, Bill. But on that one, he was hemmed in very quickly. Seibert lines his team up in the tee, hands it off. This time it's Austin coming up the middle, breaks off a tackle and stays on his feet all the way out to the 20-yard line and a first down for Harvey. Austin, a sophomore, 182 pounder. Boy, he's going to be something to watch by his senior year. Well, the Red Raiders get their first first down of the second half and get themselves out of a very bad field position. Phillips is flanked out wide right this time for Harvey. And Seibert once again gives it to Austin. Hole up the middle. He's hit, stays on his feet. Breaks up on that midfield. Nobody Down to the 40. He's at the 30. He'll go all the way. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Chris Austin won't go through a big hole. Was hit, but bumped off the tackle. Broke into the open and sprinted all the way for the touchdown. An 80-yard run. Well, we were talking about big play possibilities, and we said Harvey had to, had better possibility as far as big plays go, and there's one of the things right there that does it. Seven carries, 108 yards unofficially for Chris Alston in this game. And now Harvey will go for the two-point, or rather the uh, one-point conversion. The ball is down. Colo's kick is hit and comes up short. It was tipped partially, so once again, Harvey able, unable to convert the extra point, but they take the lead in the ball game at 18-15, and we'll be right back after this message. Do yourself a favor. If you're thinking of buying or selling a home, don't just employ the first person or company you talk to unless you're absolutely sure you have the very best. That's the advice of Kay Shupp of Century 21 Launders and Associates. When Kay talks with clients who seem unsure about who to employ, she encourages them to get another opinion. It's important that the client and the realtor are comfortable with each other. For more information, call 352-2100 or 946-7588 and talk with Century 21's professionals. You're listening to The Battle of Painesville on Lake County's favorite radio station, AM 1460 WBKC Painesville. 
the 80 yard run by Chris Alston take the lead at 18-15 and now they'll kick it off. Jim Colo, the ball teed up at the 40. Schaefer nicely back deep. Once again, the kick goes nicely his way. He runs up, catches it on the run again at the 16-yard line. Comes up the right hash marks. Bites off a tackle, gets across the 35, and finally down at the 38-yard line. Now he gets almost back to the same point they got to last time up to the 40-yard line in the last kickoff. They may choose to kick it to Schaefer for now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just as dangerous. Now we've seen nicely run some pretty neat runs uh, before on these kickoff returns for Riverside. So the Beavers have good field position at their own 38. First and 10, Rupert hands it off to Schaefer. This time he finds an opening over the left side, fights his way up close to midfield before he's finally grabbed and pulled down. Came over between his left guard and tackle and takes it to the 49. And you're right, Bill, it's, it's only going to be a few plays before we see John Schaefer break one, and he's been getting very close. Now that one, he was very close on, so 40 at the 49, first and 10 for Riverside. They've done better when they've been behind in this game. On the eye formation this time. Once again, it's Schaefer over the right side, trips off a tackle, fights his way down inside the 45, and gains about seven yards in the play. Official spot the ball just inside the 45, second down coming up. Once again, the offensive line for Riverside able to get a good push and pretty much to command this line of scrimmage, and that's what Schaefer needs for them to do. They need to, for them to open up those holes and get a couple of somebody, somebody downfield to get rid of the linebackers as well. Second down, about four yards to go, and it's Schaefer again over the right side. This time he's hit and dropped as he got just back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Sandstrom was one of those in there on the hit for Harvey. And there is such a thing as going to the well too often. third down, still four yards to go. Once again, big play coming up for the Riverside Beavers as we approach the five-minute mark here in the third quarter. And a fly goes flying, and we had someone on the Harvey line shifting around. I don't know if we, he came offside or is against Harvey. And that will give Riverside a first down. That was one thing Riverside has done very well in this ball game is prevent penalties from being called on them. Harvey, that is the third against them. And uh, well, a problem that Harvey has hurt him. Prob a problem that Harvey has had all season is penalties, and they were doing pretty well until this half. They were called for that five-yarder on the on the opening kickoff, but the first half was very clean. But Harvey does tend to pick up a lot of penalty yardage, and you don't want to do it in this type of a ball game. So it's first and ten for Riverside at the Harvey 40-yard line. And Rupert back to pass. It's a fake. He hands it off to Schaefer. Has some room on the left side. Cuts back in. Gets past one man and is finally hit from behind and dragged down at the Harvey 24-yard line. It was Aaron Green who finally made the hit for Harvey. But Schaefer got out in the open that time on the old Statue of Liberty play. Something that Riverside uses quite often, and that was the most effective we've seen it this season. So it's first and 10 at the Harvey 24 yard line. Beavers training 18 to 15, but on the move with that football. From the eye, Rupert gives it to Schaefer. He takes it to the right side, gets out on the outside, and then slips and is dragged down inside the Harvey 20 yard line. Schaefer was trying to make a cut back in. Lost his footing, and Harvey able to drag him down just inside the 20-yard line. Although he did slip and lose his footing, I'm not sure if he would have gotten too much yard, more yardage on that. He had about three Harvey defenders closing in on him from three different angles. It's going to be second down, about six yards to go for the first down. Eight, eight, four. Eight, eight, four. 
Beavers use the unbalanced line or unbalanced to the short side of the field, and then they come to the left side to Schaefer. He shakes off two tackles, stays on his feet, and he's down to the two-yard line. He's dragged down, but we had a flag thrown. And I got a feeling it's coming back. I think we have an illegal block on one of the Riverside Beavers. Well, he was dragged down at the, we we'll call it the three-yard line. But oh, wait. Looks like they're calling a face mask against Harvey. Oh, that play is going to stand. So the play will stand. So apparently someone reached up and got a hold of Schaefer's mask as he was making his cut. Penalty will be declined, I think. I would hope so. <laughs> well, they're going to spot it at the two-yard line, so it's first down and goal to go. Maybe they penalize them half the distance. <laughs> Looks like they did. Penalize Harvey half the distance after the run. So it's first down and goal to go from the Harvey one-yard line. Something that Riverside has enjoyed all evening. Here's Schaefer diving over the left side in for the touchdown. So John Schaefer takes it in from a yard out with 3.05 to go in the third quarter and now Riverside back on top. And we'll see whether they go for the one or two point diversion. The one point will put them up by four. as they line up for the extra point kick. Dan Brennan. Ball is down. The kick is up. And it is good. So it's 22-18. Riverside up by four points over the Harvey Red Raiders. 3.05 to go in the third quarter. And we'll be right back after this message. Everyone needs a finding place for their home repair needs. Needs like tools, paint, and plumbing for the interior or exterior of their home or business. That finding place is Joggin Hardware at 23 South State Street in Painesville. But Joggins has more than just tools and paint. Joggins carries hard-to-find Carhartt work clothes and lacrosse boots. Make Joggins Hardware on South State Street your finding place. Joggins Hardware, where people say, if it's hardware, it's here. Now we still got a little over 15 minutes of football remaining, Frank, and uh, the score continues to mount up here, and it's really been a seesaw battle. Each team is taking its turn at taking away the lead. And this is exactly what we expected out of this ball game. Riverside has it by four points, 22 to 18, as they get the set to kick it off. Harvey has Noble and Eddie Gant back deep to receive. Dan Brandon gets set to kick off. Towards the right side, Gant hits it off his chest, it's loose on the field and grabbed by Harvey. Very, very lucky. Harvey is very lucky to have that ball back because that ball didn't just bounce off his chest and hit the ground. That thing bounced forward towards an onrushing wave of white jerseys down there, what Riverside is wearing. And that could have been very, very dangerous for Harvey. I'm not sure who recovered it. I thought I saw Miguel Vargas over there. I, I think, sure I think that's what, got it. who it was. He got it at the 25-yard line. He actually picked up about uh, 12, 13 yards on the return because of the ball bouncing forward off the chest of Eddie Gant. So Harvey has it, first and 10 from their own 25. John Seibert gives the ball off Austin. This time he runs over the middle of the line and out to the tw about the 30-yard line. I think Harvey is hoping that Alston can break another one up the middle, but I don't think that Riverside wants to be embarrassed like that again. Picked up five yards, second and five coming up. This time the Red Raiders send Noble in motion to the right and Seibert on the option play coming out, looking for some running room, takes it to the outside, cuts up field and gets out across the 30 and to about the 32 yard line. That time he had no one to pitch it to. 
on the option and uh, couldn't cut it up either, so he just took it to the outside where his option man should have been. Riverside did a very good job of stringing that play out. Noble had, had all, all of a sudden seemed like, well, he's not going to pitch it to me. I'm going to come up and block. He came up and block and actually got in Seibert's way, and Riverside was able to stretch that out. And where are they placing that ball? You know, those uh, chain markers on the far side are only measuring out eight yards. I hate to say this. Well, they sure they, are. Someone hasn't stretched the chains out very far. <laughs> <laughs> and I think somebody is, is anybody noticed that yet? I don't think so. They're showing third and one, but it should be third and uh, about three yards to go. Yeah, the, cha the chains, the chains need, need, need to be moved another two yards. That could be a fooler for Harvey, but the officials apparently have not noticed. Here's a handoff for Harvey. They tried to run it to the left side. They were thought they were going for a first down, but the chain markers are not in the right position. They gained what looks like enough for a first down, but, but if it, they bring those chains out, it's not going to be there. And they're going to they're going to give them a first down. They gave them a first down. They only got eight yards for that. They gave them a first down, and, and they did not, They only got, got eight yards on that. Right, those on chains that. are only measuring out eight yards. The one chain marker was set on a 25-yard line. And oh, that 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 could definitely that could definitely come to play here. So we've got first and ten for Harvey. <laughs> And they try to run to the right side this time. Greg Noble is grabbed and pulled down at the line of scrimmage. Lats in on the stop for Riverside. They're getting forward progress of a little less than a yard. We'll call it second and nine. I'm sure the Riverside coaches were a little too close to realize it because they're the, the chains are on that side. But if we had any Riverside coaches over here, they should have been yelling down there something. But it's too late now. On second down, Seibert back to pass. Firing out on the right side. He has Phillips out here, but it's incomplete. Phillips tried to come back and make a diving catch. Russ Furness over on the coverage. Seibert getting some pressure once again as he tried to throw that football. Had to throw it underneath the arms of one of the defenders. And was not able to get it far enough downfield. Very good coverage once again by Riverside. 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's third, Dan, third and nine for Harvey. Seibert back to pass. And it's time to get some protection. Fires it for Mike. Uh, Mike Spikes down the right side, but overthrown a little bit. Spikes couldn't get there. And this time Harvey's going to have to punt because they didn't even come close to the chains. So it's going to bring up fourth and nine. 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Still a little too early to gamble on a fake punt. 51 seconds to go in the third quarter. Riverside with a 22 to 18 lead over Harvey. And Sean Seibert back to punt. Standing at his own 22 yard line. This time he gets a good snap and gets the kick away, a driving kick, and coming up to grab it is Young for Riverside. He's tripped up and goes down as the Red Raiders come up to make the tackle on the play. That was number 26 for Harvey, making the stop on the play. And I don't know who 26 is here. <laughs> no. Starting this. That was Binky Parker. Binky Parker making the stop. Side will take over at their own 36-yard line. They lead 22 to 18 as we near the end of the third quarter. And on first down, dropping back to pass as Rupert fires it out on the right side and it's thrown low, incomplete, up at midfield. Intended out there for Bedink. Stops the clock with 27 seconds to go in the third quarter. <coughs> Has scored three touchdowns out here tonight, but the Riverside Beavers have been done a much better job at extra point conversions. They lead by four. And this time they hand off to 
Schaefer on the draw play. The ball comes loose, and a uh, big pileup. Looks like Harvey may have it. Schaefer was stacked up. As he got back to the line of scrimmage at the 35, the ball came popping out, and Harvey recovers it. And the man on the pile was Mike Celsius once again. Well, he's had two turnovers here tonight, an interception and a fumble recovery. Boy, he is just smelling out that ball today. So Harvey gets a great break at the 35-yard line of Riverside. And every time we've had a break like this, we've had a score off it. Seibert sends Noble in motion to the right. On first down, gives it off to Austin. Once again, he comes up the middle and finds good yardage. Gets inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. And we come to the end of the third quarter. With one quarter to go. It's Riverside 22, Harvey 18, right back here at Painesville Recreation Park after this message. There's a special kind of attachment between a car and a car's owner. And that kind of attachment calls for special care for the car. So when you need parts and accessories for your car, you need All Mechanics Auto Supply. With winter drawing near... Okay, Jim, thank you for that report. And right now, Harvey with the football on a second down and short yardage. They hand it off to Austin over the right side once again with a big hole at the line of scrimmage, and he fights his way down to the 21-yard line. And the Red Raiders with another first down. Well, Chris Alston is definitely the workhorse today for Harvey. And I tell you what, like I mentioned uh, early in the game, Bill, the offensive lines for both of these teams are very talented, and they're opening up some very good holes. And a big hole to run through that time. And... Picks up another Harvey first down. Seibert this time sends Noble in motion to the right. And he gives it to Austin, takes it over the right side. He bumped off uh, one of his own men at the line of scrimmage and was able to find his way down to the 17-yard line. He picks up about four. And also Austin, 90 yards on 12 carries so far in this game. Or say 80 on one play help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> My math is, is messed up a while back. I'm going to have to refigure that one. <laughs> okay, we've got second and six, and this time it's Cybert back to pass. Has a man in the end zone, but overthrows him. Rusty Phillips got away from his man, Russ Furness, got alone in the end zone, but the pass from Cybert overthrown. That's going to bring up third and six for the Red Raiders. And yeah, we'll see what Coach Dick Bitter has in store for his team on this play. Of course, they're in four, four down territory right now. And it's Austin with the football. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and will go nowhere this time. May lose a yard. Todd Latz breaking in, making the hit on the play. A loss of a yard. It'll bring up fourth and seven. So the Red Raiders. That's more like it. We'll have to go for it because a three-point field goal would be a... A remote uh, try, and it would also leave, still leave him short. Let's do this again, Bill. Chris Alston has 13 carries for 131 yards. Okay. <laughs> Had to figure out where I made the mistake. On fourth down, Cybert back to pass. He's hit, slipped off the tackle. Sprints out to the right side. Now fires it downfield. Has a man open. At the two, he's in for the touchdown. Oh, the third boy. Three. John Seibert little, look, looked a little like his old friend Bernie Kosa on that one. He just uh, <laughs> bought some time as he rolled out to the right and then saw Green open at the two, slipped the pass into him, and he goes in for the touchdown. Once again, the athletic ability of Sean Seibert showed in that one. So the Red Raiders take the lead back at 24-22, and now Jim Kohler to try for the extra point conversion ball is down the kick is up and this time
time, it's good. So Harvey finally gets an extra point. They lead 25-22 with 10.01 remaining in this ball game, and we'll be right back after this message. There's a special kind of attachment between a car and a car's owner, and that kind of attachment calls for special care for the car. So when you need parts and accessories for your car, you need All Mechanics Auto Supply. With winter drawing near, All Mechanics Auto Supply has everything you need to winterize your car. Antifreeze, windshield wiper solvent, belts, and more. All Mechanics Auto Supply. Now with locations on North State Street in Painesville, Vine Street in Willowick, and Chillicothe Road in Chesterland. Elby seesaw again as Harvey takes over the lead, 25 to 22, and they'll kick it off now to the Riverside Beavers. And this game has really lived up to its reputation. Cole kicks it low this time. It's going to bounce and picked up at the 35 by one of the up men for Riverside who takes it back to the 41. They still got it at the 40-yard line. They were trying to keep it out of... <laughs> Keep it, keep it out of the hands. Good. That was Doug Martin who picked the ball up, got a six-yard return out of it. Well, like you said earlier, Bill, Riverside has been able to come back each time that they've been challenged. And once again, they are down by three points, 950 and counting. And they've got to rise to the occasion one more time. They trail by three right now. They have the football at their own 41-yard line. Here's a handoff to Schaefer, and he breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, fights his way across the 45 and out to the 48-yard line. Good blocking once again by the front line, pulling guard used to kick out one of the linebackers. Got a gain of six on the play. They'll bring up second down and about four yards to go for the first down. in this second half. And it's Schaefer again over the left side. He gets the first down as he fights his way down to the 49-yard line. Well, I think he has a first down. Depends on the spot. Depends on where the chains are, too. Officials may want to measure. I'm not sure. One of the Red Raiders down on the ground looks like uh, may have had a little leg cramp. This is going to be very, very close. They're going to bring the chains in a measure. <laughs> They're going to have to go right over Aaron Green. Green seems to have uh, picked up a leg cramp. The officials are going to have to wait to measure until uh, they can get Green up. Now now he's going to get up on his feet. And the officials are going to send him off to the sidelines to come out of play. Measurement shows first down Riverside by about three inches. <laughs> so the Beavers have the ball now in Harvey territory at the 49-yard line. 8:56 remaining in this football game as the officials start the clock. again. They're unbalanced to the right. Hands are in tie. The handoff goes to Roach. This time he's hit and grabbed as he gets to the line of scrimmage. He goes down. Maybe a gain of a half a yard. Well, Riverside has been trying to surprise the RV defense running Andre Roach, especially on first down when you, when you don't see him a lot on first down, but that time they were waiting for him and they were able to stuff him pretty much at the line of scrimmage, like you said, about a gain and a half a yard. But Riverside being very calm and calm out there, only down by three points, a little over eight minutes left in this game. They've got plenty of time to get down into scoring position once again. Well, it's second and nine. Eight minutes to go in the game. And it's Rupert back to pass. He's being rushed. He fires it out. He has a man downfield. The pass is caught. And running out of bounds after reception is Gary Young. At the Harvey 15-yard line. Matt Rupert laid that in just over the hands of the defender on the play. Gary Young make a good 
fingertip catch. And Riverside in scoring position at the Harvey 15-yard line. Matt Rupert has gone to Gary Young a few times today and has overthrown him a couple times. And Young had one go off his hands this time. Very good coverage once again, but he was able to get it over the, the shoulder of the defender and into Young's hands for a 35-yard pickup. And they're going to call Harvey for a late hit after Young was out of bounds. It's going to cost a half the yard, half the distance penalty on the Red Raiders. Once again, Harvey with those penalties, mental mistakes that they've been plagued with all season, and it's not helping them at all in this game. Takes the ball down to the seven-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for the Riverside Beavers. Rupert back on the draw, gives it to Schaefer. He's grabbed in the backfield and pulled down. He tried to shake loose from the tackle by Mike Sandstrom, but couldn't get away. He goes down back at the 10-yard line. Good penetration once again by the Harvey defense, and just not fooled on anything, and able to get him just as, uh, get Schaefer just as he was taking the handoff from Rupert. Mike Sandstrom, the nose guard for Harvey, has been doing a great job out here. And right now, Riverside is going to call for a timeout. With second down and goal to go from the 10-yard line. We have 7.22 remaining in the ball game. Let's take time in for this message. The smell and taste of a New England fall day in a rustic turn-of-the-century atmosphere. That's Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River. Come for the famous lake perch and walleye, or tasty steamed clams, or try the Saturday prime rib special for only $9.95. Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River is open Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Brennan's Fish House for the best seafood this side of New England. Memorial Field is Painsville Harvey 25, Painsville Riverside 22, but the Beavers have the ball at the Harvey 10 yard line with 7.22 to go in the ball game. And it's second down and goal to go. Time starting to run a little short here. Riverside definitely needs to at least tie this ball game up, Bill, if they expect to do anything, because if they if they fail to score here, Harvey is very good at running a ground game to run out the clock. And Riverside would be kind of it kind of help us out there. Well, Matt Rupert, after checking in with Coach Don Anderson along the sidelines, comes out, calls out the signals. This time they go into that single back formation. And Rupert drops back, fires a quick pass on, and it bounces off the hands of the intended receiver. He was hit as the ball got there. It looked like the ball was just a touch behind him. And I can't see the number. Judd Spalding, the man who tried to make the reception, and he was hit as the ball got there. So it's an incomplete pass and brings up third down. Still goal to goal from the Harvey 10. Now, Rupert's got to be very careful. He definitely has to try to put this up in the air, but he's got to be very careful to get it, either to get it into the right hands or get it out of bounds or out of anybody's hands so they can at least have an attempt at a field goal to tie this game up. Gary Young brings the play in. Rupert lines his team up, has Schaefer in motion to the right. He drops straight back, looks over the middle, fires one into the end zone, incomplete. It was intended for Gary Young, who was cutting across, but Harvey had two men down there defending on the play. And I'm not sure if uh, Rupert just fired it into neutral territory. To From this angle, it definitely looked like he did, Bill. It looked like he put it out of everybody's reach, which was the smart play. But here we've got a very long field goal for high school standards. Dan Brannon will try. 27 yards, 28 Great. yards. Ball will be spotted about the 18-yard line, so a 28-yard attempt by Dan Brannon. And the wind just started kicking up. Ball is down, the kick is blocked. Rolls off, loose at the 35-yard line where Riverside falls on it. Mike Wells, the holder, falls on the football. I believe that was Jim Cole, if I'm not mistaken, who came across and blocked that field goal attempt by the Beavers, and Harvey will take over at their own 35-yard line. Well, with so much on the line, you would have thought that Riverside would have done an extra special job of trying to protect that 
because the, the protect that kicker because the, the the hold was very good the kick was getting off good but they just the Harvey just got too much penetration too quickly and now but not able to get, to convert on that one well, the Red Raiders get some new life hold on to that three-point lead and Sean Seibert brings his team out he hands it off to Austin Austin across the middle fights his way out across the 40-yard line to the 41 and picks up six on the play. Boy, Bill, we came into this game looking for a dandy, and we have sure have seen it, but this thing is far from over. 6.40 remaining to be played. And the way these two offenses can uh, rack up the yardage, anything could happen in this ball game yet. Red Raiders break their huddle. They go to a tee. And Seibert gives it off. Once again, it's Austin trying to fight for the first down. Gets out close to the 44-yard line. He'll come up short of the first down. It looks like the Raiders are trying to grind out some yardage on the ground and take time off the clock as well. They'll be looking at a third down and one from their own 44-yard line. Absolutely. That's what they've got to do. They've just got to keep moving the chains. The first down here would put them in very good position, and they just got to keep the ball on the ground and keep moving the chains. Riverside right now has got to be very careful of any kind of run up the middle and uh, also uh, get in there and jam those holes because it's just a touch over a yard for their first down. Harvey sends Miguel Vargas into the backfield and he's hit as he takes the handoff. He replaced Greg Noble. They tried to run it up the middle, but he was hit behind the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. And now Harvey will look at fourth down and two. And the Red Raiders are going to have to punt the football away. <laughs> I think uh, Riverside realized when Miguel Vargas checked in that he likely would get the football, and they were waiting for him. So Seibert will have to punt, standing back at his 30-yard line. Low snap, he picks the ball on one hop, gets the kick away, and a driving kick. This Gary Young back at the 10-yard line. The ball has to the one and stop. That was the right thing for Young to do. He, he, was, he absolutely did the right thing. He doesn't want to walk to the sidelines, but that was the right thing for him to do. That ball was flying by him. He really had to let it go, and that thing just took a hook and stopped dead at the one-yard line. Looks like it was going right in, and uh, there they got the field planted down there that just stopped dead at the one-yard line, and Riverside takes over. They've got 99 yards to go to try and retake the lead in this ball game. 450 remaining to be played. And counting. Matt Rupert brings his team out of the huddle. The thing they got to watch for now is that Harvey doesn't get penetration and sack him for a safety. Rupert, long count. Got back. He's looking to pass. Fires one out on the right side. He has Mike the Dink downfield. He makes the catch at the 29-yard line. <laughs> Stretching out full length. Got that ball on his fingertips and held on to it. And the Beavers get themselves out from the shadow of their own goal line and bring it out to the Harvey, or rather their own 29-yard line. Just like that, like we said, both of these offenses are extremely explosive, and that's why Matt Rupert to Mike Bedink is one of the one of the best combinations in the county this year. 10, 4-11 to go, handoff to Schaefer over the left side, and he fights his way through a pile out close to the 35-yard line. Riverside has got to move a little bit quicker here. We're under four minutes to play. The clock is, is rolling. They spotted at the 34-yard line, a gain of five, four yards or five yards, second down and five coming up. out there. They, a lot of two-way performers. Here's a pitch to Ropes. Running to the left side. Has a blocker out ahead of him. And picks up steam as he goes across the 45 and out close to midfield. Andre Roche is out there just punishing. And he's a big, big runner out there. And he has shown some very good speed today. Takes it to the Riverside 49. We're down to the 325 mark in this ball game. That 
drive going. Here's a handoff to Schaefer. Tries the left side. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Flinks his way down to the 49 of Harvey for a pickup of two yards. They might have a trick play or, or something that uh, you might not have seen yet. They're trying to set something up because why would they stay on the ground with this kind of time? Just over two and a half minutes to go. Schaefer in motion to the right. Rupert back. Looking at pass. He's in and he dropped the football. Roach falls on it at the 40-yard line. His own 40. And that time, Matt Rupert was blitzed as he dropped back to pass. And I'm not sure who came through. Was that Sandstrom again? I think it was, but but Rupert has been blindsided all day long. Nobody has been picking up the blindside blitz. At that time, it was devastating. Third down and, and a lot, lot of yards to go for Riverside. Two minutes and counting, and they're down by three. Third, third and 18. Third and 18 at the 41-yard line, and Rupert back to pass. Yeah. Fires a little screen yeah. out on the left side to Schaefer, who's hit from behind and dropped at the 44-yard line. Riverside should call a timeout here. They need to regroup, but they, they, they have to go. They have to go for the first down at this point, and they really should call a timeout to regroup. Minute at 35 to go, and Rupert will call for timeout. It'll be fourth down coming up, and about 16 yards to go for the first down at the 43-yard line of Riverside. And uh, score 25-22 Harvey. We'll be right back after this message. The smell and taste of a New England fall day in a rustic turn-of-the-century atmosphere. That's Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River. Come for the famous lake perch and walleye, or tasty steamed clams, or try the Saturday prime rib special for only $9.95. Brennan's Fish House on River Street in Grand River is open Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Brennan's Fish House for the best seafood this side of New England. Well, Bill, if, if Riverside does not pick up the first down at this point, Harvey has come away with a victory. Well, a minute 33 to go. It's, and of course, it isn't over yet, but it would be very tough for Riverside if they can't pick up the first down on this play to uh, get control of the football once again. They've used up couple of timeouts, I believe, in this second half. I think what Riverside has to do, when, when Matt Rupert gets back into that huddle, he has to tell his line to watch the back side. If he wants to roll out, he, he cannot be rushed from the blind side. He's got to get one of those tackles in, in the unbalanced line and one of those guards to pull and to, and to come across behind him and guard his back side. He's got to get the ball downfield. He also has to tell his receivers to make sure they get down far enough to get the first down. back, looking to pass, he's being rushed, he's hit, dropped the football, Harvey recovers it, Aaron Green picks it up after Marty McGee came across to make the sack on Matt Rupert, and Marty McGee was a big play for the Red Raiders on that fourth down, and Harvey will take over the football at the 33-yard line of Riverside. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Nobody pulled out of that line. Nobody was watching his backside. Matt Rupert has been getting getting bl at blitz from the from the blind side all game long. None of the coaches saw it and have, have really noticed it. They haven't, so they, they've completely ignored it. And once again, on the most important play of this game, he was blindsided and, and did not get the first down. So Harvey takes over and Sean Seibert just goes straight ahead on the handoff inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Clock running down to a minute four and Riverside will call for timeout. And that's Riverside's last timeout. So we got a break in the action with a minute three to go. 25-22 Harvey will be right back after this message. Everyone needs a finding place for their home repair needs. Needs like tools, paint, and plumbing for the interior or exterior of their home or business. That finding place is Joggin Hardware at 23 South State Street in Painesville. But Joggins has more than just tools and paint. Joggins carries hard-to-find Carhartt work clothes and lacrosse boots. Make Joggins Hardware on South State Street your finding place. Joggins Hardware, where people say, if it's hardware, it's here. Well, the Riverside Beavers are uh, really up against it now with a 
minute and three left in the ball game. They are on a timeout. Harvey has a football at their 28-yard uh, line. And it looks like the Harvey Red Raiders are going to stay in first place in the Northeastern Conference. And uh, following this game, as soon as it's over, we'll try and get a report from Jim Long on how that Asheville Connecticut game is making out. Of course, there's still another week to go in this season. And uh, if, Ash if Asheville Villas should lose it, this thing still wouldn't be over because uh, Harvey has to take on Geneva next week. Seibert brings his team out of the huddle. Takes the football. Takes the handoff. Runs it himself out to the right side. He's going to be pulled down for a loss back at the 39-yard line. But all he cares about now is using up time on the clock. He didn't want to risk a handoff and a fumble, so he just kept it himself. They're going to spot it at the 38-yard line. Clock is running. 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. And this should be the last play of the game. Riverside unable to stop the clock. They had to call a timeout earlier in the half. And then they called one before their fourth down play. And they used their last one up on this series. Cyber just keeps the ball. Falls down over on the left side, and that should do it. No more time to run off a play. The clock is down to 15 seconds and counting it down. And the Red Raiders are celebrating the victory 25 to 22 over the Riverside Beavers. And for the third year in a row, they just alternate victories on the other team's field. Right now, let's take time out for this message. Sometimes big companies forget how they became big companies. Not Chicago Title. They never allowed their solid, steady, and consistent commitment to fundamentals become eroded. They understand that attention to detail is crucial to any transaction, be it a local residential conveyance or a national multi-state assignment. That's why they're staffed with skilled, dedicated, and experienced professionals, whose number one priority is swift, accurate service. Their belief in essentials even extends to their policy of local grassroots autonomy. All of their regional locations, coast to coast, have the authority to carry out decisions without the need of national office approval. This means their customers enjoy the kind of flexibility and ingenuity that avoids undue and costly delays. Throughout Chicago Title's 140-year history of financial strength, their adherence to the practice of fundamentals has held firm and for a good reason. At Chicago Title, fundamentals are the basic building blocks of their success. This is Jim Long at Granary Field here in Ashtabula. We have just under nine minutes to go in the game, and Ashtabula leads the County Spartans 21-6. Sean Allgood returned upon 80 yards for his second score of the game, and that was the latest score, 21-6 in favor of Ashtabula with less than nine minutes to go. Now back to Bill and Frank. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. Well, it looks like the uh, Harvey Road Raiders will share first place once again over the Asheville Panthers as they head into the final week of the season. Asheville will have an easy time next week, uh, supposedly, as uh, I believe they're taking on uh, Asheville Harbor. Or, 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 or one of the other Asheville teams. Yeah, one of the other Asheville teams in their final game. Harvey will take on uh, Geneva right here at Jack Britton Memorial Field. And uh, coming off the emotion from this game, they will we'll have to hope it doesn't happen to them what happened to them last uh, time they had a big emotional game. After they, the Ashtabula right, game. They beat Ashtabula on this field, went down to uh, Madison and lost their only game of the season. But the Beavers, the Red Raiders have now pushed their record for the season to 8-1. and one. They're 7-1 and one in the conference. And uh, they've taken a one-game lead over the Riverside Beavers in the standings. And also, they keep alive their hopes for perhaps a playoff spot in the computer rankings with that uh, big victory here tonight. The scoring started on the after the opening kickoff. Harvey taking over possession after a uh, penalty had uh, nullified their first kickoff attempt. They uh, took over on their own four-yard line, went 96 yards in a little over three minutes. Greg Noble went the 
final 16 yards on a nice run over the left side to put Harvey on top, 6 to nothing. But the Riverside Beavers came right back on their first possession as they went 83 yards for a touchdown. Matt Rupert hitting uh, Dan Brandon with a five-yard scoring pass for the touchdown. Brandon kicked the extra point. Riverside was on top at 7-6. to six. Harvey then came back in the second quarter. And this time it was Greg Noble once again. He went 24 yards as he ran right, cut left, and went in uh, standing up for the touchdown. They tried for a two-point conversion, a pass, uh, rather a pitch, uh, an attempted run was dropped, and the score remained 12-7 to in favor of Harvey. And then with time running out in the first half, the Beavers got the ball down to the Harvey one-yard line. Andre Roach busted through the middle for the touchdown, and then Matt Rupert hit uh, Garth Case on a scoring or a two-point conversion pass to make it 15-12 to at the halftime. The Red Raiders came back in the third quarter to take over the lead once again. This time it was Chris Alston who broke loose on a 20-yard, or rather an 80-yard run uh, over the left side. The attempt for the extra point kick was blocked and was 7.03 to go in the third quarter. Harvey was on top at 18-15. to But once again, it was Riverside coming back to take over the lead. This time, John Schaefer went in from one yard out and Dan Brandon kicked the extra point. Riverside was up by four at 22 to 18. And the final score of the game came with 10.01 remaining in the fourth quarter. This time, Sean Seibert, who was being flushed out of the pocket, buying time as he rolled out to the right side, got to the sideline, saw Aaron Green open at the two yard line, hit him with a pass, Green fell into the end zone for the touchdown. Jim Cole kicked the extra point. Harvey had a 25 to 22 lead. But the Beavers were not done. They drove the ball down to the Harvey uh, 10 yard line, actually had it down to the eight yard line, where uh, dropped for a two yard loss back at the 10. And on fourth down, went for a field goal. The kick was blocked and Harvey recovered the ball out at the 35-yard line, and that uh, virtually ended the chances for the Riverside Beavers in the ballgame as Harvey came away with a victory. We had Riverside with a total of 16 first downs in that ballgame to 10 for Harvey. They picked up uh, 10 of those first downs in the second half as they pretty much dominated the statistics in the uh, second half of the game, but they also had two big turnovers in the second half, two fumbles recovered by Harvey along with that... Uh, uh, blocked extra uh, blocked field goal attempt. They also had one pass intercepted in the first half. Harvey gave up the ball just once on a fumble. Riverside was not penalized a yard in this ball game by my account. Uh, they had a couple of flags thrown against them. One was declined, one was an offsetting call. Harvey had five penalties, penalties called against them, a total of 34 yards. Uh, it could have been a factor against Harvey in the uh, second half as that's when most of the penalties occurred. Uh, a couple of plays where they uh, missed chances to either stop Riverside or pick up some yardies themselves that uh, they messed up on. and. Uh, almost gave Riverside a chance, but uh, they were able to hold off, and uh, in the last late going to the ball game, they kept away from turnovers, kept away from uh, penalties, and were able to hold on and secure the victory. I think the turning point of this game, Bill, was definitely the, the, that fumble by John Schaefer because Riverside had taken possession of the ball, and they were starting a drive, and uh, Schaefer just outright fumbled the ball, and then the two key plays was the touchdown, the, the last scoring uh, pass by Sean Seibert. That was a third down play, third and long. Sean Seibert had to scramble to get out of the out of the grasp of a couple defenders, and nobody covered any of the, the Harvey people deep, and that's when Aaron Green was able to haul that pass in for the touchdown. The other turning, the, the other uh, big play uh, late in this game, of course, I think was the blocked field goal. Okay, well, that uh, was an exciting ball game, and uh, we'll come back with a recap on the statistical end of things after we take time in for this message. Attachment between a car and a car's owner, and that kind of attachment calls for special care for the car. So when you need parts and accessories for your car, you need All Mechanics Auto Supply. With winter drawing near, All Mechanics Auto Supply has everything you need to winterize your car. Antifreeze, windshield wiper solvent, belts, and more. All Mechanics Auto Supply, now with locations on North State Street in Painesville, Vine Street in Willowick, and Chillicothe Road in Chesterland. Do yourself a favor. If you're thinking of buying or selling a home, don't just employ the first person or company you talk to unless you're absolutely sure you have the very best. 
That's the advice of Sherry Lorick of Century 21 Launders and Associates. When Sherry talks with clients who seem unsure about who to employ, she encourages them to get another opinion. It's important that the client and the realtor are comfortable with one another. For more information, call 352-2100 or 946-7588 and talk with one of Century 21's professionals. Well, Frank, uh, we had a lot of notoriety about the quarterbacks in this ball game, and they certainly lived up to their reputation, but a couple of unheralded running backs pretty much took over the spotlight in this game. Boy, you are not kidding, Bill. Greg Noble, usually the workhorse for this Harvey team, had nine carries of 62 yards, but it was Chris Alston who had a couple of good gains against the Ashtabula City team in that victory, had 15 carries and 139 yards, and of course, most memorable, that 80-yard run from, run from scrimmage that he had. Sean Seibert also had six carries for 17 yards, but he Again, it's back and forth because, especially late in the game, he was basically only trying to get uh, run out the clock and not really gain a lot of yardage. 105, uh, 217 yards. Almost looked at the wrong numbers again. 217 yards on the ground for Harvey. Only 89 yards in the air, but they really didn't need it as much as as usual. Uh, Sean Seibert was only 5 of 15. In fact, he only completed one pass in the second half at 17 yarder. Of course, the touchdown. And uh, for, like I said, 89 yards, 306 yards total offense uh, for Harvey. For Riverside, John Schaefer, he was the one who did most of the carrying. But again, Andre Roach came through a lot more than we had expected him. Andre had seven carries for 50 yards. Schaefer had 25 carries for 109 yards for a total of 164 yards on the ground for Riverside. Matt Rupert, he only completed three passes in the second half, was 8 of 17 with an interception and a touchdown and a two-point conversion for 133 yards. That's more like Matt Rupert as far as yardage goes. 297 gross yards, but it was all those sacks. I had I had counted four sacks, minus 6, minus 10, minus 11, minus 10 for uh, a, a net total yardage of 260 yards for Riverside. But once again, it was the play of Chris Alston that really, really put Harvey over the hump. And only a sophomore, so the Red Raiders have a lot to look forward to uh, in the next couple of years from the, that fine uh, running back. Well, it was uh, the type of ball game we expected to see, the kind we usually see between these two teams. But tonight it was for the Northeastern Conference lead. Painesville Harvey won it. They stay in first place with a 7-1 record. And for Riverside, they drop back with a 6-2 mark. But they're not out of it. We've got one more week to go. Next week, uh, Riverside takes on Ashville Edgewood at home. And Harvey will be playing Geneva down here at Jack Britt Memorial Field. And uh, so... It could uh, still happen one way or the other, but it looks like Ashton Villa is going to hold on to a share of first place as well, and I think they have the easiest game of the three next week. I think so. I think it's going to come down to a tie between Harvey and, and Ashtabula, but that, that's my pick uh, this early. And once again, uh, I don't know, to remind the listeners, we will not be on the air next week with a full game. We will doing, be doing reports during the Cavs game. The Cavs open their uh, regular season next Friday in Charlotte against the uh, brand-new expansion team down there. And uh, because of contracts, uh, we have to broaden broadcast that game so we will not actually be doing a, a full game but we will be broadcasting probably uh, uh, reports from both Harvey and Riverside games. Right we're going to save out some of our commercials leave openings for uh, reports from each field. I understand you're going to go down to Riverside to uh, cover that one. I'll be down here at Harvey and uh, we'll keep uh, our fans up to date on the progress of those games if they can't get down here to watch. Them. That's right. Okay well that uh, pretty much wraps it up for this season unless we uh, manage to get a team in the uh, playoffs which hopefully uh, uh, still could happen, but uh, although it is a little bit remote right now, but uh, we've enjoyed this uh, season, and this was a great game to end it up on. Boy, uh, sure was. <laughs> a seesaw battle that ended up with the uh, the team that had the ball last winning the ball game at 25 to 22. The Painesville Harvey Red Raiders coming up with a victory over the Riverside Beavers here at Painesville Recreation Park tonight. Now for Frank Vaccarello, this is Bill Starkey wishing you all a good night. Hi, everybody. Larry King in Washington. Hope you wind up your week with us tonight. Another edition of the Larry King Show. What a special guest.